Welcome everybody to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Unfortunately, we're experiencing some raindrops, but believe it or not, the sky is starting to lighten up and we hope to get racing underway. Well, 600 miler here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Bobby Hamilton, give us a weather report. What's going on here? Well, it don't look good right now, but you know, the NASCAR weather officials say we're going to be able to get it in later on. We'll see what happens. Generally, they're right. You know, they don't make many mistakes. So I'm hoping it'll start about 9 o'clock or so and run away late, way late into the night because our car runs real good in cool weather. Yeah, tell us about your Pontiac here, Bobby. Uh, uh, a lot of talking about the, the Fords, the Chevys. What about the Pontiac camp? Ours seems to be doing real good. You know, it's going to be hard. And in order for us to really know about the changes that we've done to it, we need to get on a real slick racetrack, which would be Dover next week or something like that. I think when the track gets real cool, all the cars are going to equal out a lot because this racetrack really gets a lot of grip at nighttime or when it gets cool. So I don't even think the 600 is going to be the answer for us, but I think the week after that will be. Bobby, I was down here during happy hour yesterday, and, man, the crews were scrambling, a lot of people scratching their heads. Um, how about you guys? You, do you think you're ready for this? We went out yesterday morning. Oh, wait a minute. There's Johnny Andretti. Didn't you ask me about the Richmond? weather at Richmond? He asked me about the weather at Richmond. It's a lot worse here than it was at Richmond. Yeah, it was real nice there, wasn't it? it For was some nice. reason, he wouldn't stay around and talk to me. <laughs> I don't understand it. Well, that's because look at the height difference, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Somebody tie an arm behind my back. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get things underway here not too long. As I said, the sky is trying to lighten up a little bit. So now let's go to Randy Pemberton. Randy, what do you got? Steve, you must be the eternal optimist because uh, this is not the infield green grassy area that Humpy Wheeler has out in the middle of the Charlotte Motor Speedway's pit road and front stretch. The bottom line here is there's the Charlotte Motor Speedway, 50 mile radius. The front is moving this way. We're in hopes we could get a little break there, but that's not much. We're looking at about 10 miles. What we need is this gray area up here. So if we want to be optimistic, I say we're going to race today, but uh, when will we start this thing? That is the question. So as of right now, still not looking good. Green, not good. Red, even worse. I see no work. So no red here. So uh, I think we'll get this thing underway. Maybe not shortly, but tonight. Rick Benjamin. Well, Randy, we're standing by in the STP Pit Communications Center, hoping indeed to be able to go green here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway as we take a look at the WSI weather radar that uh, the NASCAR Winston Cup officials use, and hoping that we do have a window of opportunity. We're taking on some water down here in the STP Pit Center right now, but we're glad to be with you this afternoon. We want to tell you, we, we've, we're introducing something new here on TBS Sports as we watch the rain continue to fall. You can go online on the World Wide Web. We have Phil Parsons available to talk to you at HTTP CNNCOM chat. Dial him up. He'll give you information. Back with more in a moment. The Coca-Cola 600 is brought to you by Beechwood Aged Budweiser. This Bud's for you. By Texaco Clean System 3 Gasolines. By Home Light, a tradition of innovation, quality, and genuine value. By Peerless Faucet. Get more out of your faucet than just water. And by Goodyear, number one in racing, number one in tires. <laughs> When it's 120 degrees on the track, and it feels like 300 in the suit. There's only one way to drink the Coca-Cola one liter. Ice cold and inverted. Need a pit stop? Grab the one liter in the genuine Coca-Cola bottle. As little as a thousandth of an inch of motor oil separates your car's engine parts, but friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporized, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 controls volatility, fights vaporization, and provides complete engine protection. No matter what you drive, add more life to your car, take it to the star. Get a Dream Team Basketball with a 12-quart Haviland Formula 3 or 6-quart Haviland Synthetic purchase. What you got there, son? I was just checking out this home light electric start gas trimmer. Electric gas? Now, Dad, it's a gas trimmer, but with an electric start. See, you just push this button. Let me see. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Feels good. The electric start gas powered trimmer from Home Light. So easy to start. You can't wait to get started. You want them? TBS has them. Movies for guys who like movies. Tonight, the ultimate alien is back. Predator 2. Movies for guys who like movies. 9.30 Eastern tonight. 
only on CBS. And we are back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, hoping that the rain will ease up here shortly and we can bring you coverage of the Coca-Cola 600 today here on TBS Sports. I'm Rick Benjamin of the STP Pit Communications Center. A lot of stories to bring you here this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, a lot of racing action across the country. And we're going to show you some of the other NASCAR events that have taken place this weekend as we bring you our Auto Week weekend, Racing America's only Enthusiast Weekly. First, we're going to show you what happened here yesterday at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The Red Dog 300, the Bush Grand National Series cars. Mark Martin tracked down David Green early in the event. Martin won yet another Bush Grand National race here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It is Winn-Dixie Ford. Martin feels like he's got a great combination to go racing with here later today, partly based on how good his setup was for yesterday's BGN event. That's the Jack Roush team. Ford Thunderbird, Mark Martin, the winner of the Red Dog 300. Now the NASCAR Craftsman trucks also in action yesterday. This is Tucson Raceway Park, one-third mile out in Arizona. Mike Skinner in the GM Goodrench Chevrolet truck. Skinner leading Rich Bickle. There you see Ron Hornaday, who came home a very tight third. Skinner, the winner in truck number three out of the Richard Childress stables. Bickle comes by to give him a salute. Skinner, a very popular victory yesterday, winning another Craftsman Truck Series event. Pulled into victory lane, and he was so excited, he proved that he could spin that thing around and get it right back up on the racetrack. Skinner must have done some driving in high school parking lots when he was growing up. We'll call 1-800-232-1522 now for a 52-week subscription to Auto Week. Our special TV price is only $19.95. Every week, Auto Week is the first with all the inside news of racing and personalities, driving impressions, and a whole lot more. Don't delay. This offer is limited. 1-800-232-1522. As the rain continues to fall here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. But we've got a lot of motorsports coverage to bring you as we prepare for our coverage of the 11th Winston Cup round of 1996 season. Back in a moment. Why did the most serious... After the Charlotte Motor Speedway, we're about ready to put the Coca-Cola 600 under green today on TBS. Great to have you with us. I'm Rick Benjamin in the STP Pit Communications Center. 43 cars and drivers ready to get started after almost an hour rain delay. We should be ready to drop the green here very, very shortly. They've dried the track completely. Pit Road being squeegeed off. All the teams have returned. The cars are uncovered. All the fans are back in their seats, and we're glad you're in your seat at home as well watching our coverage today here on TBS. We've got a great event, $1.7 million on the line. Ken Squire, Dick Berger, and Buddy Baker, this ought to be a dandy. Ought to be a dandy indeed. We were supposed to have post time about five, ten minutes after five o'clock, so uh, right now we're, what, about an hour and ten minutes off schedule, but the drivers are now preparing. The track has dried out, and the weather that we saw has broken up. There was a big weather system that looked like it was going to stay around for a couple of hours, that's it. There may be a few small showers, but they're not expecting anything like we experienced about 4.30. And none of those small showers are going to happen here. I, we're going to get this thing in. We, we really are. The fans, there were so many fans that just Sound sat. like Baker. Yeah, well, there's so many fans that just sat in the grandstand here. None of them wanted to leave, and I tell you, we're ready. Let's go trackside with the Reverend Hal Marchman of Daytona Beach, Florida, for the invocation. thanks for the best fans in all of the world for their patience and their love for stock car racing. Shalom and amen.
gentlemen, remain standing for the national anthem to be performed by the 82nd Airborne All-American Chorus under the direction of Specialist Clifton. attention please stand by for a very special event here at Charlotte Motor Speedway on this American holiday weekend there is a group of men circling the earth 180 miles above us in space shuttle endeavor gentlemen it is an honor for all of us here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway to have you as a part of this Memorial Day tradition. And now may I introduce the crew of the Space Shuttle Endeavor as they join me in the start of this race. Good day from the Space Shuttle Endeavor and Shuttle Mission STS-77. I'm Shuttle Pilot Kurt Brown from Elizabethtown, North Carolina, and at this moment my crewmates and I are orbiting Earth at an altitude of approximately 180 miles. We'd like to take a moment to wish a happy Memorial Day to all the NASCAR racing fans attending the Charlotte 600. NASA and the entire crew would wish you all a very safe race. And with that, it's now race time. So, gentlemen, Jump start, start your, your engines! engines. taken a past champion's provisional. However, in yesterday afternoon's last practice, he was one of the faster cars, and I think we should keep an eye on him. I'm sure he'll want to make some bold moves to the front early on. And now down to Steve Burns. Folks, who's going to win this race? There's no clear-cut favor tonight, but what about Michael Walter? He broke through last weekend and won the Winston Select. Tonight, he starts eighth, and he's got a real shot. Well, there's a couple of other guys that are very, very interesting in this field. That is Terry Labonte. Terry Labonte, one of the quickest cars in practice. He goes off in fifth position. Right behind him, possibly the surprise in this starting grid, it is Chad Little, the Bush Series veteran, is trying to make a go of it here in the 600, possibly get the victory lane. What he really wants to do is finish and finish well. So Chad Little is the surprise here in the early, or at least uh, up front in the starting lineup. Let's go back upstairs to Ken Squire. Charlotte, North Carolina. 
It is the epicenter of American stock car racing, and right now it's all beginning to happen here. White knuckle time on this mile and a half track. Well, you can feel the excitement in the air. You really can. If you know, you ever try to do a picnic and suddenly it rains, and then you think it's all over. Well, that's what we thought maybe was going to happen today, but it's going to be race day, and it's going to be race day in just a very few moments. Ken, I'm not driving, but my hands are sweating. I'm telling you, I'm ready for this to get on way. 600 miles of the best stock car racing anywhere in America. Veterans or the new kids? Last two years, Gordon and Bobby Labonte, veterans or the new guys? Well, I tell you what, I wouldn't pick a winner right now. Even the way I take chances, I wouldn't take a chance on picking a winner right now. <laughs> and that comes from one of the fastest drivers in the history of NASCAR. Back to the STP Pit Communications Center and Rick Benjamin. Ken, a lot of stories we're going to be keeping track of for you all evening long here in the STP Pit Communications Center. 43 drivers. Drivers will be taking the green very, very shortly. And if you'd like more information on this event, you can be online with us, Turner Sports. We've got Phil Parsons, former Winston Cup winner, Bush Grand National Series regular. Here's the address on the World Wide Web. HTT, or check that, I'm sorry, the internet. HTTP, CNN.com, chat, dial them up. Phil will answer your questions. And our AutoZone race analysis here this afternoon. Nearly $1.7 million in purse money for the 43 cars. 400 laps is 600 miles around this mile and a half trioval. And the race record set just one year ago, nearly 152 miles an hour by Bobby Labonte, who's hoping to win once again here today. Pole sitter last year, Jeff Gordon. This is the third year in a row he's been on the pole. And you can see his speed this year just a little behind what he was able to notch in 1995. Bobby Labonte, the defending champion. Remember, Gordon won his first ever points paying Winston Cup event here in 1995. And as Ken alluded to, this could well be a race that sees a first-time winner in victory lane. It's happened the last two years. Gentlemen, I think there are some guys who certainly might be able to get their first ever Winston Cup victory here today in the Coca-Cola 600. They've fired the motors on pit road, ready to send them off for a couple of pace laps. We'll be back to bring you the start after this. Rough roads. Sharp curves. To keep a firm grip on roads like this depends upon your shock absorbers. Look, with a worn-out shock absorber, the wheel leaves the road. But with a new Monroe Sensatrack shock absorber, your tire holds the road. With Monroe Sensatrack, even the most demanding road feels safer. Monroe Sensatrack, making the road a safer place. Have your shocks checked every 12,000 miles just to be safe. You don't throw just any filter into car number 18. All the action here in the third quarter. And here's the which is why only here's quality Wix filters make Joe Gibbs team. Hey, I'm green, 18. Hut, hut. Coach Gibbs, any comment? Well, we're looking pretty good this year. He sees his man. He fires. Yes! Out at the 33 yard line. Oh. Looks like there's going to be an interference call against Joe Young. Gentlemen, don't quit your day job. Wix filters, proud to be a part of Joe Gibbs racing. Maybe it's because their frames are welded instead of bolted. Or because their decks are stamped from a single piece of steel. Or maybe it's the fact that they have the highest resale value in the industry. Oh, hey, I always wanted one of these. Thanks. But the truth is, when people are asked what kind of lawn tractor they'd like as a gift, most say the same thing. For cars that can benefit from higher octane... Frank, we're late. Mm. Texaco Clean System 3 Power Plus and Power Premium are formulated to clean your engine's intake valves, fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving. For smooth starts and sure acceleration, just give us five tanks, and we think you'll see a difference. A word of advice, though. Maybe you'd better leave the windows rolled up. The big dogs begin to growl. The Winston Cup cars out here for the 37th annual Coca-Cola 600. A couple of extra technical laps. We'll run them down pit road. They're running them through in sections here, getting the track just as dry as possible and put a little extra emphasis on the pit road area. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the 1996 600. His third consecutive pole. The defending Winston Cup champion, Jeff Gordon, flanking him back from that disastrous crash at Talladega, Alabama, from the state of Maine, Ricky Craven. In row two from Indianapolis, Indiana, his best qualifying effort of the year, John Andretti. 
beside him the runner-up in last year's 600, Texas Terry Labonte. Going to the next row, there you have Bobby Labonte and Chad Little, and what a job of qualifying he did. In row four, winner of yesterday's Grand National 300, Mark Martin, and the winner of the All-Star Classic here last Saturday night, Michael Waltrip for the Wood Brothers. In row five, it's Dick Trickle and Lake Speed. In row six, John Benson Jr. from Michigan and Todd Bodine filling in for the injured Bill Elliott. Get well soon, Bill. In row seven, Jeff Burton and Derek Cope. Row eight, Dale Jarrett, winner of this year's Daytona 500, and Kenny Wallace. Row nine, from Midland, Texas, Bobby Hillen Jr. And from Pennsylvania, Mr. Excitement, Jimmy Spencer. Row 10, Wally Dollenbach Jr. from Colorado. And the great Dale Earnhardt. Row 11, Steve Grissom from Alabama. And Ernie Irvin, who won here in October of 93. He's back and ready to go. Row 12 is Ken Schrader and Jeremy Mayfield, the Kentucky native. Row 13, Hutt Strickland and Rock Bridge, Baz, Virginia's Rick Nance. Row 14, Michael Wallace and the five-time winner of this 600, Darrell Waltrip. Row 15, Robert Presley's number 33 with Greg Sachs to take over in that car and Ricky Rudd, his 20th start in this Memorial Day Classic. Row 16 is Jeff Bodine and Kyle Petty, the 87 winner of the Coca-Cola 600. That for the Wood Brothers. Row 17 from Portland, Oregon comes Chuck Bound and from Florida, Joe Nemechek. Row 18 is Ward Burton and the winner at Talladega last month, Sterling Marlin of Columbia, Tennessee. Row 19, Bobby Hamilton out of Nashville and Morgan Shepard, runner-up here in 87. Row 20 is Ted Musgrave and Brett Bodine. The 21st row, Dave Marcus, his 28th start in the 600, and Elton Sawyer, starting shotgun on the field, the winner of the event in 1990. Look out, here comes Rusty Wallace. In-car cameras, we have nine of them today. Chad Little having trouble here before we get to those in-car cameras. He's apparently lost oil pressure, Ken. They're going to push the car off again, try to get it fixed. If it's just a belt, maybe they can get him going. And, gee, he had that great starting position. Six. And a heartbreaker after such a great qualifying run. And they change motors again. You're on board with Steve Grissom, starting in the 21st position. His roof cam look. Remember, they'll bunch the field up. He's back in 21st. Now you're with Mark Martin. You're in seventh position, down on the inside of row four. And from his roof camera, down that 1,360-foot backstretch. The 99 car, that'll be Burton out of the Roush racing team, getting ready for his go in this great classic. He'll have a tough tussle. He'll be running from 13th position. There he is getting ready cameras on board there. Over 34 cameras for today's race. And then there's Labonte. Bobby Labonte, defending champion in the event. From fifth spot, he'll come, and there you see the four in front. Terry Labonte, his brother. Remember that dramatic finish last year? Bobby Labonte across the line. Terry right behind him in second spot at the end of 600 miles. A couple more provisional laps, and then we're down to it, ladies and gentlemen. 600, getting ready to go in Charlotte, North Carolina. Glad you're aboard. The Coca-Cola 600 is brought to you by Mobile Motor Oil, changing oil for over 125 years. By Purilator, legends live on Purilator. And by Weed Be Gone from Ortho, no weed too tough. Before cars had phones, cup holders, or even roofs, Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivan, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Protect your engine. Remember, pure oil now.
Pure Oil later. Pure Oil later. Bug Be Gone from Ortho, the only ready-to-use diazinon bug killer that kills virtually any bug anywhere. If you've ever ached with love, if your dog has ever run away, if you've had disputes with members of the opposite sex, or found yourself in the middle of a barroom brawl, there are songs written about you. It's the poetry of the common man and woman. America's Music, The Roots of Country, premieres Sunday, June 2nd at 7 Eastern, exclusively on TBS. Another lap before they're turned loose under green, and it's a dramatic moment for Chad Little, the winner of the 300 a year ago, after the previous year, destroyed his shoulder, broke an ankle, He's just rolling out here, number 97. We can get more on that story from Randy Peppers. Well, they had an oil belt uh, come off the car. They stopped in Joe Nimichek's pit. Uh, Chad had shut the car off, as we saw. It was on the front straightaway. They pushed it around, stopped in Joe Nimichek's pit. Uh, those guys had an oil belt. They put it on the car. They fired it up. I didn't think that it sounded right. They went back under the hood for a second time. He now has it fired, as you can see, coming back to join the field. And uh, he's going to try and make a green flag start here. He's going to rejoin Scheduled for sixth position, finished 13th yesterday, was running in third, and he'd come from the rear of the field before he had trouble just at the end of that race. In addition to all the cameras Ken talked about, we have eight cars with in-car cameras. We have 51 microphones here, 20 tape machines in the trucks, 45,000 feet of cable have been laid, 175 people on duty to bring you this broadcast. Watching this uh, coming down pit road another time, they still haven't got the problem completely straightened out. You're also seeing the number 71 of Dave Marcus on pit road, but Chad Little is in as well. Little going directly to his pet. He stopped at the Joe Nemechek pit the last time, thought it was a belt, and his folks were ready to help out Nemechek's folks. There he is, back on pit road another time. Chad Little, the 87 Winston West champion. As we mentioned he broke his shoulder and his leg here in 94, came back in 90, got a mild concussion out of that one too, came back in 95 and won that 300. And was so up, put the hood down, not sure what the circumstance is, is they're getting ready to go green. Jeff Gordon, in 1990 he'd never driven a stock car, although he wanted everything else just about. Went to that Buck Baker school over in Rockingham, came back and said, this is for me. Ken, we have a report that Chad Little's motor has gone south on him. It's no longer able to run, so they're pushing it back into the pits. Horrible break for Chad Little. 42 cars at the ready, coming for the green flag, and the 37th annual 600 is underway. Ricky Craven there taking over the lead from the outside there. He got a big jump on Jeff Gordon as they go down the back straightaway, Ken. Looks like Craven is in to lead the first lap of this one. See Andretti riding third, Labonte in fourth as they clear turn four first time around. 42 strong come to the line. And the real American racers put it down hard into turn number one, about 190 in there. Craven changed an engine this morning. This is the first time this thing has been up to full song. Heavy traffic wow. in the back, yeah. You can see Grissom loose down on the bottom for just a moment there, having to scramble to keep it together. And Ricky Craven's going to lead as they come around for lap two. Well, you see Ricky Craven there. He's running just a little bit higher than Jeff Gordon. But right now, the whole racetrack is clean. We had a rainstorm that washed all the oil off the surface of the racetrack. So it should be good traction for everybody, no matter where you're at on the racetrack. Up in front, you see the battle. And further back, you see the, the battle in the pack as they continue to scramble. Grissom a little loose there, but gathers it back up. Rudd coming up on the outside of him. Up in front, it remains Craven and Gordon coming around to complete lap number three. A little further.
further back. It is Michael Waltrip in six, Martin in seventh, Lake Speed is up to eight, Trickle is in ninth. Three, Three wide. wide. Whoa, down that front straightaway, Steve Grissom was right in the middle there. Not a good place to be. Look at this shot. That is Hutch Strickland coming right in behind the Budweiser car, Kenny Strickland. 25th position. You're riding with Strickland looking back at Schrader. Pull your seat belt a little tighter. Mm -hmm. Deep in the field. Rush hour traffic, folks, on Memorial Day. Charlotte Motor Speedway with four complete. Mark Martin there in the sixth car and Michael Waltrip in the 21. And Lake Speed has had a great two weeks here at Charlotte. Had great test programs, run very well in the Winston Open. Ran well in the select. He's very high on this car. And Michael Waltrip won that select, but nobody has run better here than Mark Martin, who has won four of the last five starts here at Charlotte. Martin has moved up into six, Waltrip to seventh. Now Waltrip back to another spot. Speed to seventh, Waltrip falling to eighth. Whoa, Strickland in trouble. The number eight car, Mike Strickland. Here's your battle for the lead. Get back on that Strickland story in a moment as Jeff Gordon turns up the heat at number 24 and comes after the pride of New England, Ricky Freed. We were talking about youngsters, Ken Squire. The kid that's in the lead just had his 30th birthday on Friday of this week. The driver right behind him it just turned 24 not so terribly long ago. And then there's John Andretti. He's 32 years old. We have a youth movement up at the front of the racetrack at this time. The question is, will the youth movement sustain 600 miles and win for the third straight year? Let's take a look at what happened to the number eight car, Strickland, as they tighten up up in front. Buddy? Okay, you see Strickland going in underneath there. It looks like he just got the air off the rear spoiler. He twitches oh. just a little bit. He actually wrecked. He just didn't hit anything. <laughs> Raven still in front. John Andretti drops to the inside. The son of Aldo Andretti, John Andretti, gives it a wild ride. His best qualifying mark of the season. Here comes Terry Labonte in the number five. His brother right behind him, and you're riding with Bobby Labonte, the winner of last year's event. Currently riding in fifth spot in that green and black number 18 car. Same car he won with last year. In fact, that guy's got three Winston Cup wins, every single one in that one car. Just behind Bobby Labonte is the guy that's on a hot streak right now, Mark Martin. He's moving up with the front group right there. He's sitting right there waiting on the guy to make just any kind of mistake and he'll move up. Coming around a complete nine, this time with Craven staying out in front. Many said he wouldn't be ready to race for two or three months or for the entire season. And here he is leading, and less than a month ago, that horrendous wreck at Talladega. Now Gordon exerts pressure on the inside, and Jeff Gordon is going to scoot back in front. Craven trying to block Andretti and knocks a hole in there, and in some way, able to stay in second spot as he made the cut. How do you do that? Well, Andretti just did not get far enough up towards the door there for him to see him, and he'd come over. I wasn't really blocking him. He was just getting his line back. You see Terry Labonte trying a little bit higher groove there on John Andretti. In a second, that may work on the outside for him because he's really strong in that second groove. Many consider Terry Labonte the favorite in the 600. This is his 516 consecutive start. He's had a great season today from 30th to 3rd since Rockingham and the Winston Cup point standings. Terry Labonte at number 5 is on a roll, and here you're riding with Mark Martin in 5th position in the Valvoline car. You see Terry trying that high groove. He's just working it in right now. Nobody's run up there, and he's just moving his groove up a little bit for later on. You see him making a move to the outside of Andretti as I speak. Side Chevy on the outside, the 37 Andretti and Cherry Lavani. And Mark Martin's running one of his famous races right here. He's just sitting here watching them race in front of him, wait to see which line goes the best, and I guarantee he's going to move on which lane is the quickest right now. Texas Terry is giving a school as to how to run this <laughs> racetrack. Boy, that number five car is very strong. 1984 Winston Cup champion Terry Labonte who never looked stronger taking a look further back and you're looking at the uh, car number 19 
as it continues to ramble out here as we go back further in the field check out some more of the racing as you see dick trickle who had that second place yesterday holding off johnny benson now benson around taking that spot away and three wide here hamilton down on the inside up on the outside going around kenny wallace is uh bodine jeff bodine Boy, Kenny Wallace's car looks very, very loose getting into turn three. That's the part of the racetrack that has a lot of sunshine on it right now. He looks to be very loose getting in the corner. All of this is back in 27th position that you're watching right now. Here's Grissom trying the outside in the 22 on Hamilton in the 43. And that's a really good point, buddy, because right now the entire front stretch, turns one and four are in the shade, turns two and three are in the sunshine. And the drivers face a very different racetrack when they're running in the shade versus running in the sunshine. Got to be really, really alert so you don't make a mistake under these circumstances. The 43 of Hamilton there is handling quite well. He passed him right on the bottom part of the racetrack. Uh, merely inches off the white line. That car is really working well, and he's tight enough. You didn't see it wiggle or anything. I think Kenny just dropped back a little bit, Kenny Wallace, and he's just riding it out right now until he can work on the car. 42 cars, first 14 laps, caution free. Kenny Wallace trying to close in a little and coming underneath him, making a run on Wallace in the 81 was uh, Chuck Bound. Now here is Jimmy Spencer, and just in front of him is Bobby Hillen. Hillen's in 15th position, Spencer's in 16th, and behind him comes Earnhardt, the ever-present force in any race in which he appears. He's got a good one right behind him. That's Ernie Irvin in 28 there, working that higher line, trying to get by uh, Earnhardt as they come off turn four. And Ernie Irvin has him. Ernie Irvin getting around and picking up a spot one of the great winners on this track. And what a story on Ernie Irvin last year at this race was the very first time he was really out in public after his horrible August 1994 crash at Michigan. He came here, he just sort of wandered around and tried to keep the press away from him, tried to keep fans away from him. And Ernie just kept saying he was going to come back and look at him, he's running real well today. He is back. The first heartbreak of this 37th annual 600. Is standing by with Patty Moise right now, the story of Chad. Chad, a really tough break out there after a wonderful qualifying effort. Tell us what finally put you out. Well, it, it appears that uh, the oil pump belt came off, you know, when we were during the parade lap. And um, by the time I noticed it, um, you know, it had done enough damage to the motor that we lost... I mean, it probably seized up a lot of the bearings, and I can just feel the motor is ready to blow right now. So, I mean, it had no power at all, and the belt was off. So we put another one on and started it, it, it would run, but it's just it's just ready to blow right now. And what makes the belt kick off? I don't know. It could have been a rag from another car. Uh, it could have been something internally with the oil pump that just happened, but it's just, it's just bad luck for uh, for me and Sterling Cowboy. It's just that's racing, as they say. Half break for Chad and back to Ken now. Johnny Benson in the 10th position. And back for the lead, here comes uh, Labonte in the five up on the outside. You saw Benson making a great move. He's been coming on. Here's Terry Labonte taking the lead for the first time. Ken, all for two weeks now, we've watched everybody run right around the base of the racetrack. Terry Labonte has set his car up to run a higher groove. You see the groove he's running there? It's really working for him at this particular time. Now, whether it'll work all night or not, that's another question. But right now, he is flying. Take a look at Todd Bodine and Bill Elliott's number 94. What a ride he's giving that car. He's moved around Hillen and pulled up in the 14th spot. Hillen back on the inside. And that Jasper Indiana car, the Jasper Engines machine, number 77, stays right there with him. Hillen, the hand the 94. Oh, huh? Back in that car with them. I'm going to tell you what, Bobby Hill is showing me something. That car jumped sideways and kept his foot in it. You see him drive right back under Todd Bodine as they go in the corner. Great Lord. This is Todd Bodine's first ride in this car. He's got the ride until Bill Elliott returns. They say Bill Elliott will return for the Brickyard in August. Everybody's looking for that. Race that out of it. 15th position is Bodine. Right behind him you see Jimmy Spencer. And here comes Ernie Urban on a tear. He drops onto the bottom. Look at Ernie Urban. Pour it on. And that Robert Yates, number 28. Now, I hope Jimmy sees him. He does see him. He gives him room. Ernie's under. You can see the car kind of slide 
tip there, that's when that air gets off that rear spoiler, and you have to tiptoe by when you start getting sideways like that. Yeah, look who's right behind Urban, too. It's the Intimidator. Steve Burns can add to the problems that Dale Earnhardt, we can add some information about the problems that Earnhardt is having. Dale Earnhardt doesn't usually talk much on the radio, but he has radioed in to Richard Childers and said the car is awfully tight. I keep fighting it off the corner. Richard said, just keep it close this segment and we'll make a change. Their change is they're going to raise the crack bar. And guys, we have heard many, many drivers talking about how tight their cars are early in this race. Earnhardt trying to make that move. Wilt Browning in the news and record from Concord, North Carolina once wrote, if you want drama, get Earnhardt. If you want 600 miles on the ragged edge, get Earnhardt. If you want reckless abandon, get Earnhardt. We've got him today. Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. Chances are it will outlast your car and your furnace and your roof. There's no telling what your mowing faucet might outlast. Mow it. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitreds. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. We're back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's been green all the way for the first 28 laps. 42 drivers battling. Only one of the 43 starters dropped out. That was Chad Little right at the start. A motor problem. And take a look at this battle here. There's Bodine, the Bill Elliott, number 94. And he's been hot and heavy with Schrader. He was hot and heavy with uh, the Jasper car a little while ago. He can't get away from Jimmy Spencer. All in that cluster fighting for 17th position. looking over at that McDonald number 94. They can look back and forth at each other. I doubt they do, though. 94 is one of many cars here today that has a bit of a different paint job. They've got a Monopoly promotion going on, and it's painted like a Monopoly game. They uh, trail the leaders by 11 seconds, and only 11, from first back to uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th. Well, they better decide this pretty quick, because they got a man that's right behind them there that don't wait a whole bunch of time <laughs> on them. I see Spencer, and you see Sterling Marlin there in the four just behind the two that are fighting it out here. As they run side by side, they're not able to run a good clean line around the racetrack and look at the traffic jam behind them. Mm. Meanwhile, up in front, Mark Martin, he looks like he's on board the Enterprise today, circling the globe on a mile and a half track. Ah, look at that. Jimmy Spencer on the outside. Sterling Marlin on the inside as that war continues, 19th position at stake. And this is just the kind of stuff that has brought a record crowd to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Biggest crowd ever to see a Winston Cup stock car race here today. They put another 8,000 seats in the backstretch grandstand area, sold every one of them. Probably if they had another 15 or 20,000, they'd have sold them too. 
125,000 folks lucky enough to get tickets. Another 40,000 standing around. Just Gapers having a great day. Ooh, Rick Mass sliding a bit. And here comes Kyle Petty up on the inside for 21st. Well, Kyle Petty looks like he's solved some of the problems as far as the way that car handles. He's able to keep it right down on the white line in one and two. And his line in three and four. Look, he's almost running off on the flat through the corner. Take a look at Rusty Wallace back in 32nd spot and charging. Remember, he's come from dead last. He's picked up 10 spots. Grissom closing up on him on the outside. Just in front of him, Dave Marcus, three wide, coming down the main straightaway. Door gets closed. Still three wide. Whoa, Jeremy Mayfield up the middle. This morning when Ron and Pemberton found out that the furthest back anyone had ever won this race, in terms of starting position, was 20th. And by the way, that goes all the way back to 1960. He said, well, stand by. A record's going to be broken. He <laughs> thinks that car is a whole lot better for the race tonight than it was in qualifying. You can see Jeremy Mayfield just in in the 98 RCA car there. It tells Steve Grissom to go on the inside. He's not handling well at the moment. And they do that. They communicate with hand signals through the back window there. They'll have put their hand up inside the car and tell them which side to go on when they're not handling quite well. Take a look at Dale Jarrett here in the number 88 as he continues his charge. Dale Jarrett has had some good runs here. Won some grand national races on this track. Trying to make it all happen here in the 600. The first time that he has pulled that one together. He is running the ninth position. Now you're looking at the number 77. That's Hillen, and just behind him is Derek Cope. So Hillen in the 77 is fighting with Cope. That's for 11 spot. And for the moment, Hillen has 11, dropping Cope in the 12, back into 12. Here's a battle for second spot. Mark Martin just keeps turning up the wick. You he's see, going after Gordon. You see, he's almost a half a car left lower coming off the corner there. Uh, Mark Martin is a master at setting the car up for later in the run. He never runs really well when they drop the green flag, but 10, 15 laps into a run, you see Gordon's car start up there, and Mark Martin's a full half car left under. I'll tell you what's a bit worrisome for everybody else. Mark Martin has this race car set up exactly the same way he had his Grand National car set up yesterday. And remember, he won yesterday. Last fall, they did the same thing, and they pulled off a clean sweep. They won on Saturday in the Grand National and Sunday in the Winston Cup. And this is the same car. This is the same Winston Cup car. Exactly. It's got a new body on it, so it's a little faster of anything. Well, you're riding with the man we're talking about. This is Mark Martin's car as we come off turn four there and start down the home stretch. Not an empty seat there. Mark Martin has said, I don't know what strategy is. I just race. The strategy is to win. There are long races, and you can't count a lot on what happens. You just decide as you go on what you think is going to give you the best chance to win. Great physical condition. Probably puts more time in working out, getting his body as strong as possible for these races as anyone on the circuit. Remains third. Gordon stays second. And up in front, it's Labonte. Looking further back for the moment. And ready. Whether speed is in fourth. Great speed has slipped right up into fourth and stays there. And ready fifth. Craven sixth. And Michael Waltip is into seventh. There's Ricky Craven following John Andretti. They're back in fifth and sixth position. Andretti five, Craven six. You know, Ken, I think that Ricky Craven, right now, he was injured in uh, Talladega in a horrifying crash. He qualified quite well, but right now he's pacing himself because I'm sure he's still just a little bit sore from that accident. I'm sure he's running this race 600 miles. Right now in his mind, he's saying, I'm going to make sure I have something left. He is only sleeping two hours at a time a night. He didn't want to be on medication. And so he gets about two hours sleep, and he has to get up and walk for 20 minutes because the pain is still so bad in his back, but you wouldn't know it right now. Yeah, when I asked him, Ken, whether he thought he could make the whole 600 miles today, he said, I think so, but I've really got no reference to what happened to him at Talladega. It obviously never happened to Ricky Craven before. He just doesn't know if he can go the whole 600 miles. Right now he looks awfully good, though, doesn't he? Doesn't happen to many people. And have them walk away from him. Watch Andretti. And back up front. Well, there's Labonte still taking that high line. And here comes number six. Here's Mark Martin charging down to the inside. He's underneath Gordon. In a fight going into third spot. Give it to Gordon. 
Gordon pulling back around, but here comes Martin edging up on the inside out of four over that ripple strip, those bumps there. Martin has it again. Back to the line. And it's Mark Martin in the second place. And closing up is Lake Speed in number nine. Mississippi's Lake Speed with his best run of 1996 puts the melling spam can down to the inside on Gordon. Boy, oh boy, I'm getting cold chills just hearing you. <laughs> That's great racing, though. You see Lake Speed having a, a run of his career right now. Passing Jeff Gordon to go into third place. Yeah, right Lewis and Car is on the racetrack. It is really happening. And look how high Gordon is running on the racetrack. He is having a problem keeping that number 24 on the bottom. Steve Burns standing by with Jim Long. This is one fired up picture. Jim, how in the world are you guys running as well? What have you done? Well, the fortunate thing is we're not as tight as everybody else is. But we're still a little bit tight. We're going to have to work on it as the race goes on. But uh, it's early in the race, yet. Long way to go, but he looks good now. We're going to go to break and then be back with more of this great race. 42 laps, 42 cars under green in the great challenge here today on Memorial Day. Lamonte leads. TBS presents Matlock Mason Mystery Monday. This Monday, beginning at 9.05 Eastern, Ben's Beachside Getaway serves up more than he expected. Everything I know leads back to these two girls. Then, at 11.05 Eastern, a pop star is murdered. I didn't kill her. And Perry counts down the top ten list of suspects. Just what are you getting at? Matlock Mason Mystery Monday, beginning at 9.05 Eastern Monday, turn to TBS. Goodyear Aquatread revolutionized wet traction design. Now Goodyear introduces the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season Infinitred. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials, Goodyear's longest-wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitreds. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. A car engine has as little as a thousandth of an inch of motor oil protecting its parts. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporized weakening its ability to protect vital parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. If it's metal and it's outdoors, it needs rust protection. Enter Krylon Rust Tough. Spray or brush on a beautiful finish so tough it even protects against the destructive elements of nature. Well, most of them. Krylon Rust Tough protects tough. Introducing the VersaPak Cordless Rubber and Broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. Promotional fees and consideration has been paid by the following. STP, celebrating 25 years with Richard Petty. A partnership in racing and high performance. STP, drive a better car. Hanna-Barbera. And by Budweiser. Car number five has just lapped the 39th place car, Todd Bodine. But the big story right now is just behind Texas Terry out in front is the remarkable Lake Speed. The pride of Mississippi is having a great run. He has eight top ten finishes, gentlemen, on this track, including a third place in the 600 back in 1987. But it sure looks splendid to see a Melling car have this kind of a run. Number nine in second position. It sure is nice to see Harry Melling hasn't had a top five finish since 1991, and his car is a rocket today. Fifth place at stake here. Here's Craven going to the inside. Tags Andretti slaps some paint out of turn four. Oh, and that opens it up for Michael Waltrip. Kind of hole he found the other night when he dove beneath Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt in turn one to win the Winston Open in $200,000. He's on a charge right now. Wood Brothers, four-time winner of the 600, have Michael Waltrip at the keyboard and closing up on Craven. You see the lights coming on here at the racetrack. The fastest car in the lights the other night, the 21 of Michael Waltrip. Here's the leader getting around. The number 98. They feel going a lap down. 
trying to sort themselves out through traffic here. Boy, some tough run here. Here's Burton, brother uh, Wallace in the 90, the Heilig Myers car. Getting down by the, here comes Lake Speed. Both field of cars, only one DNF so far. We're 50 laps into this event, and virtually everybody remains on the lead lap. 41 cars on the lead lap. Like, uh, can't be, can't be. That's what scoring says, but it can't be that many. Can't be that many. Yeah, they got 20. Uh, probably, you're right, it's 39. <laughs> <laughs> well, almost everybody is. They haven't lapped all that many cars. A very competitive field. Kyle Petty working his way along that uh, Sabatis ride. And coming right with him is the 94. Boy, what a charge being made today by Bodine. This is back there in 21st position. On pit road bound. Chuck Bound, now on pit road, number 94, 95. 95. You can see Rick Pass going in the corner there. One of the things the Pontiacs have been complaining about is going in the corner, the nose of the car actually coming across the racetrack. It looked like he cut uh, Todd Bodine off going in the corner, but it's merely because that car will not turn going in the corner properly. Mast in the number one car is running in 22nd, and the McDonald's car with Todd Bodine is directly behind him. Now you see Michael Walton focused. Boy, I'll tell you, he's focused in six spot. The other guy that's focused is Bobby, Le yeah, Bobby Labonte on the high side, passing John Andretti. I think John's uh, just, he's not handling quite right right now, and they've told him to ride it out until the first pit stop. That's a very smart thing in a 600-mile race, is not to eliminate yourself. Wait until you can work on the car on the first pit stop. Well, they've also had a bunch of DNFs this year. They don't need to have another one here. They need to finish this race, not just have a good finish. They've got to be around at the end. Down to the inside, Bobby Hamilton. Spencer, 19th position at stake. And Spencer has it for the moment. Spencer stays 19th. Hamilton takes it away. Boy, he made it look easy. That bottom line is starting to become a, a factor again. It's really quick down there. You can see Spencer going back to the Oh, Kenny, Kenny Wallace. Wallace. That's on pit road. He spun coming into the pits. No caution. It is very greasy there. And Kenny Wallace in that square deep car brings it in. Randy can add to what happened. Well, you, you guys called it. He, he hit a little wet spot. It is still a little damp on pit road. Came down pit road. It appeared at speed. Scheduled pit stops now starting. Ricky Rudd now on pit road. He will pit just up for me. But uh, Kenny Wallace just flat lost it and went around and uh, continued on towards his pit. But scheduled pit stops, they are going to be a little early as Ricky Craven now comes down pit road. They want to take a look at these tires since all that rain came down. They want to make sure that they don't go too far and have a problem. 56 laps, 84 miles have been completed. 84 miles, Craven is in, Kenny Wallace completing his stop. Here's Craven and already battle scars on the side of number 41. Take another look at what happened to Craven. Pitting. Here comes Kenny Wallace in the pit road. You see rear tires locked up. He tries to correct, he overcorrect. Now the car is starting to go back and forth. He did a very nice job of not getting over into the pit wall there. Strickland pitting, Nemechek, Andretti, Benson all on pit road. Now we see Sterling Marlin coming on the pit road. We mentioned that Todd Bodine had brought the Elliott car on the pit road. This is all happening at lap 57. 57. Bobby Hamilton pits. Mast is pitting. Dick Trickle brings number 19 on the pit road. Coming by is the leader. Terry Labonte stays in front. And the battle for second still is a tight one at the present time between Lake Speed and Mark Martin. Now Gordon pits. And behind him comes Morgan Shepard as well as Wallace. Mike Wallace. What they're doing here, you see, nobody really expected the rain that we had this afternoon. It changed the racetrack very dramatic. Certainly, this is the first opportunity that they have had to adjust the race cars, also to check the fuel mileage. Earnhardt in 13th position on pit row. John Andretti away. It, it to gasp for a moment and then started. The 15 coming in as well. Dollin back. Let's go to Steve Burns. Taylor Earnhardt in. 
in. They're going to change four tires. Now, they talked about their strategy before they came in. If the jack goes up on the left side, they're going to raise the track bar, look at a left rear rubber, and Dale has also said, let's pull the fenders off. He may have had a little tire rub. He's down and away. A very good pit stop. Dylan is in. Jeff Burton comes in. Grissom, Michael Waldrop, Schrader still all pit Musgrave now. This is all now in lap 60. Green all the way among the 42 starters. And Mark Martin brings the car that has been running in second place on pit road. Still staying out there is the leader, the guy taking the wide way around the racetrack. Still has some magic in that car number five. Labonte in the lead. Drops down. But I don't think he's coming in. Let's see what happens this time. Here he is. He's going to make it in. Looks like for a moment we're going to make another another lap out here leader is on pit road cherry labonte in the car number five kellogg's colors looking good boy look at that pit crew go to work you know when you change four tires at a regular uh, tire store it takes half a day to get it these guys are doing this in 18 seconds and one of the reasons that this crew is so good is that they have stuck together for so very long during the wintertime, a lot of these teams shuffle crew members, not these guys. Ready, set, off he goes. Best finish in this race, second. Behind that younger brother, Bobby. And there's Bobby pitting right now a year ago. Here's Randy. Robert Presley just by from the 33 car, nursing broken ribs. And the insert goes in the seat as Greg Sachs jumps into the Skull Chevy. They have not, they have turned the engine off. He's trying to fit the steering wheel. He lost a lap on the racetrack. They get Greg situated, he'll pull off. Rusty Wallace pits behind Greg Sachs. Rusty Wallace has a major problem. They can talk to him, but Rusty cannot talk to the crew to tell them what is wrong with the two Miller machine. So Rusty pits behind, Greg Sachs gets ready to leave the pits. That is a major problem because Rusty Wallace talks to his crew and tries to tell them what the car needs every time they go out. After each stop, he tells them whether it helped it or hurt it. This can hurt him in the 600. The 33 car pulling out, new driver on board, Sachs. Took a lot of work to get him into that car. The problem really is that Sachs weighs about 50 pounds less uh, than Robert Presley, and he stands about four inches shorter than Presley does. So they had to put an insert in the seat, and that was part of this change. Dave Marcus is leading. Number 71 is out in front, the prodigy car for Wausau, Wisconsin. Native Dave Marcus, great moment for him. Alton Sawyer, second. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat fused. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. Goodyear AquaTread revolutionized wet traction design. Now Goodyear introduces the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season Infinitred. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitred. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. Engineering, craftsmanship, quality. These are things directly related to the safety of you and your family. That's why Federated stores carry the most trusted names in auto parts, like Monroe, Anco, Champion, Ray Bestis, Borg Warner, Walker, Fell Pro, and Move. When it comes to safety and quality, insist on the best. At Federated Auto Parts, you get only the best. Now that Sea Dew has become the best selling boat in the world, we felt it was time to acknowledge those who inspired us. Okay, boys, take a bow. Introducing the VersaPak cordless rubber and broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. 
along with Brett Bodine in the 34th position, the Lowe's car. Remember, he crashed his number one car out here in qualifying back on Wednesday night. Still trying to make up some time out here. Take a look at this. Here's Schrader in the 25. He's continuing to work. He's in 12th position. Fighting with Sterling Marlin. Just got him to take 11th spot. With him is coming Earnhardt. Just behind him there. Johnny Benson in that batch. This is all back there for 11th position. Just in front of him is Ernie Irvin. Who has broken into the top 10. That's the first time I've watched the three car go through the corner of Dale Earnhardt right on the bottom. They may have helped this car a bunch when they made their pit stop. Schrader in 11th position. We can get more on the three car, Steve Burns. We talk a lot about the technology. Dale Earnhardt on the last pit stop, they were going to raise the track bar, pull out a spring rubber, so on and so forth. Dale radioed in a moment ago and said, hey, the car's a lot better, but next time would somebody clean the windshield? <laughs> Morgan Shepard just made a second stop and came uh, back on the track. An update from Patty Moise on pit road and these latest uh, green flag stops. Patty? Yes, we were standing in the pit for the five car, and we noticed that uh, besides four tires, they also took a round of bite out. I had been talking to Gary Dehart, the crew chief for the five car, earlier today, talking to him about yesterday's bush race. I noticed how great Terry had been running in that high line, you know, really making it work for him. And Gary said, yeah, that, that he enjoyed it up there, and that really worked for him so good. That, that was one of the things they worked on in yesterday afternoon's practice, was making this car work in that same groove. Right now, we're watching the groove of Earnhardt in 13th position, Patty. Gets around Benson. They were side by side. And take a look here at Terry Labonte working on Ricky Rudd. The 10 car looks like uh, it could be getting lapped. It's back in 28th spot. They got a lot of trouble with that car here, Ken. That's one of the cars that the crew has just not been able to get consistency out of. Richard Broom, the crew chief, said this car runs like it's got a thorn in its shorts. We never know how it's going to behave. <laughs> it's where? It, right in its shorts. Some days it's wonderful, and sometimes it just doesn't run well at all. It's like they're in one of those it doesn't run well at all modes. 27 cars remain in the lead lap. That's 27 cars all still fighting in lap one. We've completed 72 laps under green. They've traveled 108 flawless miles flailing each other out here. And the Coca-Cola 600, if you're just joining us, folks, look at Kyle Petty at number 42, clearing the 27 as he continues to attack. Gets around Elton Sawyer. Eric Cope, Bobby Allison's car. Carrying new colors, new sponsorship now. Very excited about that, that number uh, 12 in the 17th position. And look at some of the 125,000. They just keep adding 10,000 seats every year. Now, how about this? Kenny Wallace up around Alton Sawyer. Sawyer is racing hurt today. He's got a couple of cracked ribs. Going to try to tough it out. Said this morning he was going to try to run the whole 600 laps, the 600 miles. You can see Greg Saxon, the 33 there, subbing for Robert Presley. He's really got this thing running well right now. I'm sure Robert Presley was glad to get out there with broken rib. Anybody who's mm -hmm. ever had a broken rib knows what I'm talking about. And try to drive at those speeds with the G-load you carry into these 24-degree corners. Ah, here comes Bobby Hamilton. Wait, haven't we seen this before, Allison and Petty? I think we have. <laughs> the car owners for these two cars battle just like this side-by-side, -side, lap after lap, here and at many other Winston Cup racetracks, year after year after year. 18th position right there. Give it to Hamilton. Hope back one. And just behind him, in the 20, is Kyle Petty, who won this race in 1987. Terry Labonte stays fourth, first, Gordon second, Mark Martin third, Jared fourth, and Michael Walter is now third. Bobby Hamilton has had a good year in 1996. He's never won one of these contests, but he's hot. He is fifth in the laps left, believe it or not. Look at Earnhardt here. He goes by Kenny Schrader right on the bottom, kind of moves up a little high in the center part of the corner. Now he starts down the back straightaway. Looks like Earnhardt's car might have twitched just a little bit on the high side there. What that could be is the car pushing just a little bit there. He over tried to turn it before it was ready and it kind of wiggled back. Earnhardt 11th, 12th to Schrader, 13th is Sterling Martin. Well, if Earnhardt's car is wiggling a little bit, I wouldn't really worry too terribly much if anybody could take a wiggling car and have a crew that can work on it, fix it, make it work correctly. Earnhardt is the guy. 
you know, a lot of times the car can be handling perfect, and as you go through drafting like that, you change the airflow over the top of the car, it'll make it twitch like that. I didn't imply he wasn't handling it, so he's running the best he's run all day. Schrader on the bottom. Sterling Marlin, who won Talladega on the high side in that yellow number four. Schrader's one of those guys that has had problems with the car not being consistent. Last night they said they were just junk, but they looked pretty good today. Yeah, and look at the right side of that valence in the center part of the corner. It was actually dragging the ground. That is three and a half to four inches of clearance to get through inspection. Look at it bounce right there, right on the valence. It's hitting as it goes through the corner. How much weight on that right front tire when you pop it into the corner, buddy? I've heard anywhere from four to 6,000 pounds of downpour when they start in the corner. About 190 miles an hour into turn one here. On this mile and a half track, the famed Charlotte Motor Speedway, TBS, honored to bring you the Coca-Cola 600. We'll be here for four more years to do that as well. We're thrilled about that. We'll take a quick break and be back as we watch Terry Labonte out in front trying to put it back in victory lane another time. Beginning next winter, and for every championship season to follow, a new network dedicated to covering sports as never before. From CNN and Sports Illustrated comes CNN SI, the 24-hour sports news network. STP Son of a Gun Protector makes vinyl truly shine. Leather, more lustrous. And rubber, more brilliant and beautiful. It works so well, in fact, some people even use it on cars. Son of a Gun Protectant, and also Son of a Gun Citrus Cleaner by STP. When cars raced at an awesome five miles per hour, mobile oil was there. When a race car broke a hundred, Mobile was in it. Mobile was in the winner of the first race across America. And since then, Mobile has been in more Indy 500 winners than any other oil in the history of Indy. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. We're part of the biggest event during the summer games. The beer run. The Bud World Party continues. Round the clock, around the world. Welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Rick Benjamin here in the STP Pit Communications Center. The Coca-Cola 600 finally underway a little bit late, but we've run caution free so far. Let's take a look at where the Winston Cup point battle stands at this point after 10 races. Dale Earnhardt, the seven-time champion, on top over Jared and Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon, last year's winner, sitting fourth. Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd, Ricky Craven, eighth. Musgrave, Ken Schrader, winless for a long time, but still in the top ten. And Ken Squire, he's a driver who had a great run going here one year ago before falling out with 40 to go. That's so easy to do. You can name driver after driver who come just that close, and it's gone away from them. Well, right now, we're seeing a change of leadership. Jeff Gordon is back in front another time, dropping Terry Labonte in the second spot. That's what teamwork does. They made a pit stop. They were falling back. They dropped back almost to fourth place there. They were in third, and a chance of going into fourth. They made the pit stop. They had corrected the uh, handling on the 24 car, and now he is flying around the racetrack. Another look here, buddy. You see Jeff Gordon going down in the corner on the outside. You can see the five car just backed off and said, hey, it's too early to contest the team car. Two smart teams, two smart drivers. That's exactly the right way to play it at this stage of the event. So Jeff Gordon is back in front. 
Remember when he won this race in 92, he was 22 years of age, his first victory, some moment. Well, he's back in front. Now take a look at Mark Martin. He's back in fourth spot, and there's Michael Waltrip right there in fifth. And here comes Michael to the inside. Boy, if Waltrip working on the bottom of this racetrack, you see him going by Mark Martin, he made it look awfully easy. He looked like Mark Martin on the inside the other night. Hey, you know, here's an interesting point. We've had two first-time Winston Cup point winners in the last two runnings of this race. What do you think Michael Waltrip's chances are of winning his first-ever Winston Cup race this afternoon? He is running extremely well. Darn good. as it continues to try and find its way into this thing. I don't want to speculate on a six car, but he is having some kind of problem at the moment. I don't know whether it's handling or what, but he is dropping back. Ward Burton just went by and drove off about five car lengths when uh, just before they made the pit stop, uh, the six car was one of the fastest cars on the track. And Ward Burton has not been having a good day at all. I mean, he's running out of the top 30. There goes Lake Speed down on the inside. He's running in sixth spot. There is something to miss for Mark Martin right now. Go back to that tire story for a moment, uh, Dick Bergen, because I think it's an important issue as far as this race is concerned, what these guys were doing and their concern just last night. Well, Steve Meal, crew chief for Mark Martin this morning, said they are having no tire problems whatsoever. In fact, they didn't scuff any tires in at all. They couldn't tell you whether one of them is a loose set or whether one of them is a tight set or whatever it might be. A lot of the teams are about 50-50. Half of the tires are scuffed in so they know what their characteristics are. The other half are not. So it all depends on who you want to listen to. Some of the teams say the tires aren't a problem at all. But trying to find them that match up, that's been the thing they've been well, talking yeah, about. Yeah, and they can't really get them to match up because no matter what they've done to try to find what matches a, a pair up, they can't do it. And Goodyear basically says the reason for that is the tires are all absolutely identical. It's the teams and not the tires. For 10th place, Bernhardt on the inside, trying to go beneath the man he gave a break to, Ernie Urban. Gave him a ride in a sportsman car a few years ago, and it set Ernie Urban on his way. And Earnhardt gets him this time. It's Dale Earnhardt back to 10th. Ernie Urban dropped to 11th. Earnhardt's one that only has three sets of tires scuffed in. They're just going to tough it out. Presume that every single set of tires is the same as every other one. Can't a lot of times in a 600-mile race, if a guy's really running well like Earnhardt, uh, you'll go by and let him go by, and then you'll study where he's running on the racetrack and change your line around the racetrack, and sometimes it works, sometimes not. If your car is too loose, you can't run the bottom. Well, here you see Andretti back there in 20th spot now. And with him comes Rusty Wallace. And Wallace from 42nd position is rambling. Doesn't he ramble? Look at him come along from 42nd up into 21st and closing, getting back into traffic. Wally Dolan back down on the inside. Rusty, who won the last time out, Simona, California, the great Sears Point road course. In fact, he's won two out of his last three starts. Let me add something to this. They have to go right now because Jeff Gordon and Terry Labonte are just seconds behind them to put them a lap down. So Rusty Wallace, if he has anything hidden, he'd better use it right now. Replay of yesterday went the entire distance with one caution late in the going, and Mark Martin won that Grand National race. We have now covered 93 laps, gentlemen, 93 laps deep, and nary a caution flag has flown. 139 and a half miles, and the action is unbelievable in this 37th annual Coca-Cola 600. I don't even want to see this thing 25% of the way over Ken Squire. This is a good race all the way through the field. I mean, you can look at almost any position, and there are three, four, five, six cars all fighting for that position and all very well equally balanced, just like this. Derek Cope in 18th position, Kyle Petty in 19th. Here's Bobby Hamilton moving up on Nemechek. Had a good run in that number 33 car after the driver change. He did most of the practicing in that car. Presley just sort of stood around and watched his race car go around the speedway. And Sachs did most of the work, as it should be, since he's going to have to run most of the laps here this afternoon. They built that special seat for him. I guess he finds it comfortable. Chuck Bounds can return to the racetrack. He has left the pit area many laps down. Now take a look at number two, Wallace, closing up on Andretti. This is for position. Wallace 
Rusty Wallace in 21st, Andretti just in front of him in that 20th spot. Kyle Petty drops back. This will put him in the 20th. They've taken Kyle down a spot. Those two cars have overtaken him as they still stay uh, bumper to bumper. Rusty uh, got his problem solved in the first round uh, of the pit stops here. He was uh, only one in nine, ten seconds from going to lap down. Now he's right back in the thick of it. Ah, there's a problem on the five, and Randy Pemberton can tell us more. Well, it's another radio problem. He ha he cannot talk to his crew. The crew can talk to him. When they when Terry goes by on the front stretch, uh, Terry Kehoe told him, if the car is loose, touch the door. If it is tight, put your hand up on the roof. Three consecutive laps. Um, Terry Labonte put his hand up on the roof. They radio back to him and said, next time you will hit about lap 120 and we'll loosen that baby up for you. So, they cannot get specific. You can't talk about air pressure, you can't talk about wedge. So, it's Gary Dehart and the guys in the crew. See, now there are a lot of race fans reading Winston Cup scene. They say, how to take those radios out. How to go back to Wade Baker when he used to run those early races. <laughs> how do you think, buddy? I love the radio. I tell you what, there wasn't anything great about cutting sideways in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Getting up toward 100 laps complete. No cautions as yet. Gordon leading Jarrett, Labonte, Michael Waldrop, and Lake Speed. The Coca-Cola 600 is brought to you by Steel Outdoor Power Tools, by Split Fire Performance V Spark Plugs, and by AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Steel, maker of the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide also makes a full line of trimmers with enough power to handle almost any size job. It could be one of the more useful tools you'll ever own. Available in steel territory, starting at $79.95. Enter the Performance Zone with Split Fire Performance V spark plugs. You hit your passenger, you're gone. Experts say Split Fire Performance V spark plugs mean more horsepower and better mileage. The difference in gas miles has been fantastic. Enter the Performance Zone only with Split Fire Performance Vs, guaranteed. And now, get triple platinum performance for the life of your car. New Split Fire 3 spark plugs. Get the most out of this Indy car, Patrick Racing put Scott Pruitt behind the wheel. They built a team that could get it in and out of the pits in the blink of an eye. And they chose a battery they can depend on to get it started. The Duralast battery from AutoZone. The same Duralast you can depend on to start your car. So don't settle for anything less. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Introducing the VersaPak Cordless Rubber and Broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. Welcome back live to the Charlotte Motor Speedway and our coverage of the Coca-Cola 600 here on TBS Sports Race 11 of the 1996 Winston Cup season on board with Dick Trickle. We are live, of course, here in Charlotte, joined by Robert Presley, who just got out of the Skull Racing Chevrolet. You've got that crack grip from last week. How racy is the track after all the rain we had? Well, I tell you, the racetrack's in great shape, you know. Everything, uh, it rubbed, uh, got a lot of oil off the track. The racetrack's fast right now. It's a little bit tight, but you'll see a lot of people changing as the day goes on. Long pit stop to get Greg Sachs in your race car, but you're 15th, we're told, right now. That's a good run. Well, you know, uh, we had the car set for Greg, and, you know, Greg practiced it all week for us. We went longer than we thought we'd have to, so I felt pretty good, but we're going to let Greg make up some time here and hope we get out here with a good finish and the old bad to show All right, hope you're feeling better soon and able to run all race long next week. Thanks, Robert Presley, for stopping by. Ken Squire, back to you. Actually, they dropped down now out of the top 30 with that stop. We're watching Dave Marcus come back on pit road, and let's reestablish the field for you. In the first position is Jeff Gordon. 
Casey just in front of him the 94 about to go a lap down. That's the 22nd position car. Now here's the 88, Dale Jarrett, winner of the Daytona 500 for a second time. Back here in January, pull that feed off. He's in second spot, and he's uh, being shown two and three tenths of a second behind the leader, Gordon. Now running in the third spot at the present time, there you see the number five, the Kellogg's car, and that's Terry Labonte. Running in fourth for the Wood Brothers in the Citco number 21, Michael Walter having an excellent ride through the first one-fourth of this race. We're at lap 106 at the present time as you look at Michael, winner of that Winston Select. There's your fifth place car, Blake Speed, stays right in the midst of this festival of speed here today. You can see his car. He is actually able to pull the left front below the white line in the corner. That car is really handling well. He dropped back just a little bit on his pit stop. I think he may have had a problem, but he is getting around the racetrack quite well. But let's talk about Dale Jarrett in the 88 for a moment. We haven't given him much of a call thus far. He's having some run. He started all the way back in 15th spot, Dale Jarrett did, and now he's got himself up to second position. Todd and I now has gone a lap down. They should be having pit stops coming up in not too terribly long. That's Dale Jarrett in the 88 there. He is making great advances towards the front right now. And you know in the Western Select the other night in the first segment, it was about this time in the night, and that was the fastest car at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And why do you stress this time of night, buddy? Well, I think he set his car up uh, for this time of day because had it started on time and all, it would be almost uh, closing time here, and uh, you can see that Dale Jarrett really has his car working. And he's caught it from 2.2 seconds down to 1.6 on leaderboard. board. A fair bit of the pre-race hype has been about Ford versus Chevrolet, and a lot of the Chevy guys said, ah, NASCAR's giving him the storm. Ford's going to run off with this thing. Well, we got a Chevrolet in the lead, a Ford is second, a Chevrolet is third, a Ford is fourth, and so on. Down. Sounds like politics, doesn't it? Uh, well, it is politics. What they're all trying to do is they're trying to get a little more concessions from NASCAR, but NASCAR's maybe smarter than all these guys because they've got them all running the same. It's the driver that counts. Jarrett in the car. Jarrett in the 88 trailed by eight seconds after those pit stops. Now it's less than two between first and second spot. By the way, the chassis dyno is in the garage area. Gary Nelson told all these guys in the driver's meeting this morning after it's all done and over with. The fast cars are going on that chassis dyno. Going to find out who's got a big engine. Who's got a, I should say a big engine. <laughs> but strong uh, engine. Excuse me, strong engine. Yes. Right. Now you do. Yep. <laughs> Good race here. Yeah, look at 21. Michael Waltrip down to the inside. Moving in on Terry Labonte in the number five. Just in front of them, Jeff Bodine in the number seven. He's in 24th spot, about to go a lap down. Terry Labonte cannot run that high line much longer like he's running. He's almost up in the great part of the racetrack. And I guarantee he's wearing his tires out a lot quicker than the people down remember in the Dick, groove. Remember, Dick, that's just me sitting the last 30 and 40, but the next 30 laps. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, Labonte's really almost up at about the fifth row of the bleach now. He's running up so <laughs> high in that racetrack. This is not a dirt track. There's no cushion up there. That's where he grew up, that kind of racing out there in Texas. Boy, he looks good right now, and he doesn't like a Walter Flip Rand. Yeah. Wood Brothers seeking that fifth 600 victory. Last they did it with Kyle. We've had so many great moments here. Did it with Neil. All right, buddy. You're Ken, right. that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> <laughs> I knew time was, was on my favor there. You <laughs> see Michael Walter making a move on Terry Labonte. At the end of the turn three, you'll, you'll see that Terry will make a move here. He'll start up the racetrack. Now watch the 21 close right back in. Next lap. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, though, isn't he? Michael Waltrip is definitely there, knocking on the door. First place at stake. 113 green flag laps. Flawlessly driven. First section of this race. We've completed 169 and a half miles. Nobody has put a wheel out of line. What a fantastic event. And this battle for the lead continues. We still have some 20 cars in the lead lap. Make that 22. Make that 23. Come on, Michael. 
you can't do that, buddy. <laughs> hey, you know how they're always talking about how you got to have a, You know how they're always talking about how you got to have a brand new race car in order to go fast. Look at that number 21 race car. That thing won on March the 20th, 1993, at Atlanta Motor Speedway with Morgan Shepard behind the wheel. That's the last Wood Brothers point win. Got one car coming in slowly. There's Jimmy Spencer in. Greg Sachs is also in at this time. And they begin to see the opening of the envelope on the second set of stops on pit road, and they're going to come under green, apparently. What do you think of so many green flag laps yesterday and today too, buddy? Well, I think the racetrack is in great shape, and I think the guys have a great tire here, and I think the cars aerodynamically are much better than they were in the race last year here. As you see Terry Lamonti taking that outside groove there, and Dave Marcus even giving him a good run right now. And when I said that a while ago, guys, I promise you, I don't have a favorite. I like Terry Lamonti as much as I do Michael Walker. Oh, sure. uh, his oh, car, sure. his, his oh. car is just not uh, right working well right now. Car number 41 just came in. Craven made a routine pit stop and back on the way. Andretti is on pit road as well. We mentioned Spencer has come in. And the 94 car with Todd Bodine has also come in. This is at lap 116. 116. The fewest cautions in the 600. There have been two races run with uh, what, two cautions. One was 62. Gee, Nelson, Stacy, and then uh, 63. That was... Uh, that was, uh, all right, Doctor. Sure, easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> it may be Lorenzo. Well, let's talk about some favorites to win this race. And, you know, buddy, I don't think anybody would be unhappy to see Michael Waltrip win. This is his 310th Winston Cup start. He has never won one before. I'll tell you, everybody in the house is pulling for a first-time winner. Take a look at that 22 hanging right in there. Had some problems earlier, but they look like they're getting them sorted out in the 31st position now. Ward Burton, number 22. Then you're exactly right. I think uh, Ward Burton might be one of the fastest cars out there. Steve Burns. Dale Jarrett is in the pits. They talked about chassis adjustments. They're going to take a half a pound of air out of the right front. Jackman comes around and slams it down. Blood nuts are loose and the left side tires go on. Without a problem, let's see. Still there, down and away. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, the Rainbow Warriors ready for Jeff Gordon to come on pit road. He follows Jeff Burton into his stall. The Warriors go around the right side. A wedge wrench goes into the top right rear. Leaving the windshield. One round of wedge for Jeff Gordon. Right side tires already done. Working on the left. Patty Belize has got Terry the body stop. Yeah, the five car is in the pit. The four tires stop. We know they've made an air pressure adjustment. They have not gone to the chassis as far as taking bites in or out. Keep away. Average Dale speed. Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt down here in the pit. This is a lightning fast pit stop. They also working a round and wedge out. They also swing the windshield. Back up there. He asks and he's given. Average speed, 170 miles per hour to the second green flag uh, pit stop. The old record, 151.9. 1995, Bobby Labonte pulled it off, and right now they're shattering records in a great Coca-Cola 600. Stay with us here on TBS. When it's 120 degrees on the track, and it feels like 300 in the suit. There's only one way to drink the Coca-Cola one liter. Ice cold and inverted. Need a pit stop? Grab the one liter in the genuine Coca-Cola bottle. In South Dallas, a lot of folks like to work in their cars. And a lot of them come to AutoZone. They save money on top quality parts and they find helpful people like Rocky Brown. Oh, sure, there are other parts stores in town, but Rocky's the kind of guy folks go out of their way to see. He's good at solving problems. And he really knows his parts. You see, when it comes to getting the right part, the right price, and good advice, there's just no place better than AutoZone. It's a simple concept. The bigger the hole, the easier air can flow through it. That's the idea behind Dynamax. 
the performance exhaust with the open airflow. Dynamax. Its patented open design maximizes your engine's full power potential. So you can really haul. Performance exhaust system, engineered by Walker. Dynamax. I always use my favorite steak sauce. It's tradition. Every once in a while, I'm in the mood for something different. Something thick. Robust and hearty. <laughs> yeah, all right. New A1 Thick and Hearty. Peerless Faucet didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Valvoline, Plastic Coat, and by Steel Power Equipment. Bobby Labonte has inherited first place, the man who won it last year, 32 years of age. And look at this battle between 88, DJ Dale Jarrett, and number 24, Gordon. This is the scramble for second spot. Gordon came out of the pits after leading in seventh spot. He is back to third. Bobby Labonte stays up in front, and it has been a tremendous struggle between Jarrett and Gordon for second position over the last two laps. Labonte has a lap on the field. He has yet to pit. He pitted last on lap 62. He will have to come in soon and give up that lead, and this will then become the lead. Just behind them, running fourth right now, is Michael Waltrip, and fifth is Terry Labonte. You see right now that Jeff Gordon's trying to make a move on Jared as they start into turn one, and just in front of them, that's Bobby Labonte, just in front of them there. Now, so they're running him down. How did he get so out of sync with the rest of the field? I don't know, but he better shake a leg because that 88 car of Jared is really flying around this racetrack, and he's holding a very low line. You see him going in the corner right on the white line there. This car is handling quite well now. Bobby Labonte in the 18, just in front of him, the car they call Little Joe. It won three times in 95, including this 600. That's the same car, the number 18, that pulled it off a year back, giving him that magnificent victory. Out of turn two, Bobby Labonte, a lap up on the field, but has not made the stop. I believe everyone else has at this point. Last of the leaders to pit in that first round of stops. Whatever was ailing Terry Labonte just before he stopped, he seems to have it figured out because he just went by Michael Walter as we were talking there. Look at this. And there goes the 88 of Dale Jarrett into the lead. No, no, no. Remember, he's a lap down. A lap down? Yeah, that 18 is yet to pit, buddy. He hasn't oh, come in. He was the only guy on the lead lap. The only guy on the lead lap, and the strange thing is, you know, he's, they say he's not really out of sequence, but he came in so late, I think he may be getting ready to pit right here. He better pit yeah, pretty exactly. quickly. Yeah, As we speak, about. he's coming in. Yep. Randy Pemberton is there, and we'll follow the story of Bobby Labonte and the Interstate Battery Chevrolet as it comes down on pit road. Well, they're awaiting... Bobby Labonte to arrive in the pits, and he has. Jimmy May Carr, the crew chief, with the jack. It was great strategy to stretch it as far as they could go. If they caught a caution, they would have had a lap on the field. Bobby Labonte has won this race before. They're already around the left side. So far, nice smooth stop. Second can of gas going in. Bobby gets a cold drink, throws it out the window. Clean the grill. Waiting on the left front. Little slow on the left front. They don't like it. Down in the way, 21-4. Could have been better. Not bad. Bobby Labonte started in go-karts, lined up behind Terry, and their dad told Bobby to follow his older brother, get used to racing. Bobby passed Terry, and he wouldn't let Terry back by. Afterwards, his father asked him why he didn't follow instructions. He said, hey, my brother, I wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of Bobby leading now, he is a full half lap behind the leaders. He's got some work to do, and here's the battle for first. Dale Jarrett is there, two-time Daytona 500-mile champion with Jeff Gordon, the winner of the 600. And that victory two years ago, right there. Look at him, just ease that number 24 up on the outside. Masters at their work here today at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in the 37th Annual Coca-Cola 600, live on TBS. Delighted to have you with us to enjoy one of the great races. What an emotional win that was for Jeff Gordon two years ago. Remember him in victory lane? wiping his face and 
he was in tears. I think everybody in this place was in tears when he won that race. He was in tears the whole last lap, he said. It's a wonder he found fifth lane and, and victory lane. <laughs> Here he is about three car lengths down, out of turn two. That back stretch is so different going into three than going into one, buddy. Very much so. Uh, you have a nice transition into three. You see the car going in right there. Now, if you watch the 24, he's a little bit tight coming out of the corner. He kind of gets high there and has to turn the wheel to get it off the corner, and it kind of throws the back out as he starts in. But the 88 car, you see him going in turn one there. There's a little rise as you start in, and the good handling cars are able to stay down low. Tell you what, I wouldn't count Bobby Labonte out, even though he's not in our picture right now. In the first round of stops, he went two laps further than Jarrett. Second round of stops, he went 12 laps further than Jarrett. So he is getting very good gas mileage. Hey, anybody dropped out of this thing besides Chad? Have we lost anybody? Oh, we have contact there. Todd Bodine got into the wall off turn four. We've completed 100. He's, he's continuing to motor. We have 134 laps complete, 201 miles. As far as attrition's concerned, two guys are out. Chuck Baum with handling and Chad Little. Maybe it's because their frames are welded instead of bolted. Or because their decks are stamped from a single piece of steel. Or maybe it's the fact that they have the highest resale value in the industry. Oh, hey, I always wanted one of these. Thanks. But the truth is, people are asked what kind of lawn tractor they'd like as a gift. Happy birthday, Dad. Most say the same thing. repair shop where they have the expertise to service these complicated systems. You want Midas. There's no place like it on Earth. Introducing the VersaPak cordless rubber and broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. From the Duralube aerial platform watching the 94, Todd Bodine running in 21st right now, the Elliott colors, giving it a good go on the mile and a half here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. There you see Hunt Strickland dipping down to the inside, trying to take that 21st slot away, and he's got it. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Right back comes Todd Bodine on the outside. I don't care what position it is, he'll fight you every inch of the way. I got to tell you, he's a brave man because he hit the wall just a little while ago with the right side coming off turn four, and that didn't deter him a bit. He's been in right in the front. A few laps ago, the 99 and the 94, that was a Burton out there, a Jeff Burton. And the 94, we'll take a look at this from a few moments Oh, back. trouble on the home stretch. We got a car coming out. Marcus hard in the wall. Torn the whole front of number 71 off. The Prodigy car slides across the track into the infield right at the start finish line. Marcus in the 71, taking a hard hit. Running in 31st position. David appears to be okay. Take a look at the front of that car. Now that's at lap 141. He's got the window net down. You can see him moving around. They do, do tell him in the driver's meeting, if you're all right, put the window net down. Dave Marcus has done that. 211 and a half miles are complete. What a sad ending for Dave Marcus, the all-time veteran of this race. 
Dave Marcus has had more starts in this 500 than anyone else. And for the 55-year-old campaigner, native of Wisconsin, who finished six year back in 1974, this is what happened to his day. It looked like he and John Andretti might have made a little contact and that turned Marcus straight towards the wall and he hits almost head on there. You can see some heavy skid marks up to the wall. They really tell the story just before the uh, start finish line as they go out to administer to Dave Marcus. Pit stop should be happening. Marcus's car, that's a front clip for sure. And there you see the scribbles on the asphalt. What happened here to Dave Marcus? It's a long time to think about going to be hitting the wall. So the field begins to saunter on pit road. This is the first time they have pitted under a yellow flag condition today. And Steve Burns is on pit road waiting for the other Dave, Dale Jarrett. Dale, 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 Jarrett, right Dale Jarrett slides in. The crew goes to the right side. I don't think they're going to make any kind of a chassis adjustment. This is just going to be four tire change. We're looking at a split screen situation here. Again, four tire change, no chassis adjustments. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. It was an air pressure adjustment only on a four tire stop for Jeff Gordon. Pitted behind him, Ricky Craven, as well as Lake Speed. Speed down and away. Four tires for Craven, a little small in the left rear, and he's down and away. Ricky Craven came in in ninth position. Jarrett and Gordon duking it out as they came down pit road. Back with more of the action of the Coca-Cola 600 in a moment. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality products at Napa's red, white, and blue sale. With Autolite resistor spark plugs only 69 cents after rebate. An Evercraft 25-piece tool kit just $15.99. And STP products free after bonus rebates. So come save some green at Napa's red, white, and blue sale. Goodyear Aquatread revolutionized wet traction design. Now Goodyear introduces the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season Infinitred. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitred. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Now that sea has become the best-selling boat in the world, we felt it was time to acknowledge those who inspired us. Okay, boys, take a bow. It takes 45 one hundredths of a second for a John Smoltz fastball to get to the plate. And they say this game is slow. Braves and Cubs, 4 Eastern Monday. Brought to you by Gladiator and Universal Luxury Bands, the official bands of tracks, teams, and drivers throughout the NASCAR world. Call 1-800-445-2825 for a dealer near you. Charlotte Motor Speedway under caution, first time coming around to complete lap 144. Cleaning up the remains of 71, Dave Marcus's car. And back in the garage area, Patty Moise ready to file this report. Well, the 75 car is here in the garage area and it's been basically chassis changes. If you've heard the old expression about raising the radiator cap and sliding a new car underneath, that's pretty much the case here. They've changed two rear shocks, the rear spring, both front springs, and a front sway bar, and I think they adjusted the track bar as well. The 98 car is in the garage area up a little bit, and it seemed that they had a vibration, and they're changing the transmission. Thank you for that report. How long do you think, Patty, before we might get Morgan back out here? I think they're just about done now. Seems to be that they're winding up. Thank you much. All right, we'll take a quick break and be back for the restart. Gordon, Jarrett, Labonte, Speed, Waltrip up in front in a dandy Coca-Cola 600. Don't go away.
400 miles of rocky rutted trails with enough bumps and jumps to shake a truck to pieces. But if you think an endurance race through the Arizona desert is a real torture test for a truck, just imagine what it can do to a battery. That's why Parker 400 winners Dan Smith and Dave Ashley chose a battery they could depend on to go the distance. The Duralast battery. The same Duralast you can depend on for your car, because it's the one we stock at AutoZone. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. Before cars had phones, cup holders, or even roofs, mobile oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivan, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Peerless Faucet didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radios. Goodyear's longest-wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitreds. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. 146 laps complete. They're just under green going into turn number one. Gordon in the lead. Dale Jarrett second. It's Bobby Labonte in third. Lake Speed in fourth. And as you watch them, Michael Waltrip is in fifth. Earnhardt sixth. Martin seven. Craven eight. Rusty Wallace breaks into the top ten. He's in ninth. And Johnny Benson rounds out that top ten. Headed for turn three. 75 Morgan Chevrolet. Oh, Bobby, Bobby Hammond loose. Oh, Michael Waltrip gets it. Three cars on the inside getting caught. One is Ricky Rudd, the other is Bodine. Somebody got through that. Hillen's car torn up on this restart. They didn't get a lap in after they came back from the flag before we had trouble. It started up in three, ended on the outside of four big time. Another look at what has just happened. Buddy Baker. Well, that thing's wrecked. You can see Bobby Hillen going in under Bobby Labonte. And you can see the back come out right there. He corrects. Now he corrects again. He's in big trouble here. The back end comes all the way around. Michael Waldrop had nowhere to go. It shares the right front fender off the 21 car. Everybody else just kind of wheezed through here. You can see Bodine there on the bottom and Ricky Rudd right against the water barrier on the inside. Another view. Boy, it don't change. You could watch this for an hour. It's the same thing. No, he just went up the racetrack, didn't he, buddy? The guy that was really lucky was Derek Cope on the outside there. And speed. And, Der and uh, Dale Earnhardt, too, on the very bottom got through that. Let's go to Michael Waltrip's pits. Well, there, Michael has talked to the guys. Other than that right front fender that you see four guys are working on at the moment, Michael believes his chassis is all right. Means the wheels are straight, no toe-in problem that he knows of as of right yet. Now, here's the deal. They're going to have to try it. They want to try and get this fender back on there because aerodynamically, you take that fender off, Michael Waltrip will not win just for that little piece right there. So they're going to go ahead and chisel just a little bit off the right front. They may grab a piece of sheet metal if they can find it just to patch. That depends. Steve Burns. Ernie Irvin just came in. The last time they bit it, they had intended to pull the rubber out of the right front. It came back in, raised the hood, and it wasn't there. So we're listening right now. They pulled one out of the left rear instead is what they're saying. Here's the 21 car coming out. You can see the fender. They're going to take a lap here and then do some more surgery on the Michael Waltrip Wood Brothers car after he got caught there. Boy, Bobby Hillens had bad luck. Five DNQs thus far this year. <laughs> Want them? CBS has them. Movies for guys who like movies. 
One big, bad, in-your-face movie every Sunday night. Tonight. Prepare yourself. The hunt continues. Turn them off! Turn them off! Danny Glover and Gary Busey battle the ultimate alien. Predator 2. You want them? We got them. Movies for guys who like movies. 9.30 Eastern tonight. Only on TBS. Replacing your engine or transmission is a big deal. So it's a good idea to ask a few questions. Like has it been remanufactured or just rebuilt? Ask if they provide a guaranteed list of new parts. Ask about their warranty. And finally, ask how they cut them. Once you have the answers, you'll choose Jasper. For all the answers, call Jasper 1-800-827-7455. With Best Western's new family plan, you may get discounts to attractions like Six Flags theme parks. Or the zoo. Maybe coupons for food, giveaways for kids, great offers from United Artists Theaters, and for a car rental. Every Best Western gives you so much. And a room for the family at a special family plan rate. Maybe even a deal on a second room for the kids. <laughs> for family plan reservations, call 1-800-528-1234 or your travel agent. When you're traveling with your family, stay with our team at Best Western. Enter the Performance Zone with Split Fire Performance B Spark Plug. You get your passing gear, you're gone. Experts say Split Fire Performance B Spark Plugs mean more horsepower and better mileage. The difference in gas miles has been fantastic. Enter the Performance Zone only with Split Fire Performance B guaranteed. And now, you could win a limited edition 97 Mustang Cobra. Enter the Split Fire Performance B sweepstake. A stop and go has been assessed number 21, but he wanted to come back in anyway. They wanted to do some work on the nose of that car, and Randy can add to that. Man, they have just got all kinds of problems. They tried to leave that right front fender on as he signals Bobby Hillen on the way by. They tried to leave the right front on. They wanted to pop, rivets, pop rivet it back on, make it hold, but the thing is now tucked up behind the right rear. They're going to go ahead and cut it. And if they do that, he is, he is done for the day. He'll run, but he won't run up front. Bobby Hillen's car being rolled back into the garage area. Field ready on a restart. As they come down, it's Gordon, Jarrett, Labonte, one, two, three. Speed stays fourth. Earnhardt to fifth. Craven to sixth. Martin, Wallace up to eighth. Benson to ninth. And Schrader cracks the top ten. All the cars in the inside lane have been lapped. Fast cars to the outside in the restart. Bad break for Michael Waltrip. Remember, he hit the spinning John Andretti in the back stretch. Still came back, though. Finished tenth on the lead lap. Yeah, but look at where Bobby Labonte, with whom we are riding right now, is all the way up into third spot. Look at the head at Jarrett and the leader, Jeff Gordon. Whoa! Oh, we've trouble. got another one loose and up in the wall. Looks like Bobby Hamilton going all the way around. Bingo. All of a sudden, we can't get through turn four. The most dangerous time on the racetrack is a restart. I don't care what they say. When you're double file like that, the chances of getting the air off the spoiler or somebody touching you is uh, enormous. Randy Pemberton. Well, not only that, buddy, but as you well know, new tires, how touchy it can be, and that is one of the things that they get just a tick sideways, they'll lose it in a hurry without building some heat up in these tires. Here's the 43 in, and they've got some... They've got some surgery to do. Another look at Bobby Hamilton in trouble up here on the 24-degree banking. Well, you can just see it. He, nobody made any contact. It looked like he got in and the car just come around on him. He was running very hard in the upper lane there. And that part of the racetrack hadn't really been used that much, so he may have just got up here in the gray part of the racetrack and lost him. Ricky Rudd must feel sent for. Got caught in that last one. Darn near in this one. There was contact there. Looks like Todd Bodine got him on the left rear corner there. Good old replay. Well, it depends on whether you're Todd Bodine or not. But I will get, I will address that uh, part about the tires, too. You qualify on cold tires if you don't spin. So uh, I don't think that's a real problem right at the moment. New sponsorships are uh, making a story these days. Here's an interesting story about one of them, and a very unusual one at that.
thing you see is their, their eyes get uh, about twice the size and uh, their mouth falls wide open. Fred Flintstone's cool. <laughs> Fans young and old have fallen in love with the hottest new character in NASCAR racing, Fred Flintstone. The unique sponsorship pairs the Cartoon Network and Hanna-Barbera with Diamond Ridge Motorsport driver Steve Grissom. And each time Grissom takes to the track, so do several of the most popular Hanna-Barbera cartoon characters. Every appearance we go to, uh, anytime we see race fans out there, I mean, whether it's kids or parents, I mean, especially the parents, the band, my, my kids, uh, they really pull for that Fred Flintstone car, that Yabba Dabba Doo car. Fred, cool. <laughs> It changed Steve Grissom's life, <laughs> the driver of that car. Yeah, he says now that he's got Fred Flintstone up on the front of his car, his own son that's five stopped cheering for Jeff Gordon. <laughs> that's a great piece. Uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, we're 154 <laughs> laps in here. I need to keep Baker in here, too. <laughs> Thanks. Well, 231 miles have been completed in the sixth annual Coca-Cola 600. Light is off on the pace car, ready to go racing. Gordon first, Jared second, Labonte third, Earnhardt fourth, Craven to fifth, Lake Speed sixth, Mark Martin seventh, Wallace eighth, Benson ninth, Trader tenth, and once again, that front ten as they were before. Oh, we have contact on the front straightaway. It was Kyle Petty all over the back of the number 16 Musgrave, and that sends the field flying down into turn number one. I think we've torn up about six cars. As they came to the line, you can see Rusty Wallace there in the two oh. car. He's torn up uh, the sacks. Three of sacks. There's Musgrave's car. Is that Lake Speed? Lake Speed. Oh, yeah. that's a treasure. So Nimitzil coming back to the line. They're racing back to the line and make no mistake about it. Kyle's getting his lap back. Gordon comes across the line, followed by Bobby Labonte in second, Earnhardt up to third, and Craven across in fourth. Heavy damage down to the corner. Most of the cars driving, well, not all of them, but several of them driving away. Look at the end of that 33 car. John Andretti's car, badly blunted, front and back. Nimichek's Johnny Benson. Off it. Johnny Benson has got problems with this car, too. He's smoking badly as he comes by. Big tear up in turn number one. It happened right on the start, right here at the line. Kyle Petty into the back of the 16 Musgrave, and that's where it got away. Well, on the restarts here, you see Musgrave starting off there. Kyle takes a look to the inside, right here. They make a little contact on the left rear corner. Musgrave's out of control, right in front of Bobby Labonte. And you can see Earnhardt just barely getting by there. That's the second time Earnhardt has dodged the bullet here. Oh, Rusty hits hard. Yeah. It's the second year in the row, Rusty has been damaged up in the first turn. Not much doubt about that one. That was a hard hit. Yep. Took out some real good cars. Here's Musgrave's car coming in. Going behind the wall with it. Here we go again. Musgrave, that's the car sliding right in front of Labonte. Couple a little drop kick and away he goes. Oh, look at Rusty's car. Oh, Get Rusty up in off the, the air. ground. Wow. Yeah, he almost took it over. Whew. That was ugly there. Oh, he's still hitting things. Yeah, he'd lost everything. Brakes were gone, everything. When that thing got up in the air, he was four feet in the air on the wall. Lap 166 when that happened. 166. Few drivers going over to the infield care center here. Short system automatic checkout. They were just coming to speed. Gordon stays first. Speed. Excitement. Sliding out of control, spinning. Pocono Raceway. See speed 
and excitement. Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, and all the stars of Winston Cup Racing invade Pocono Raceway twice in 96. June 16th, it's the UAW GM Teamwork 500. July 21st, it's the Miller 500. Both events sold out in 95. Call 1-800-RACEWAY now. Tickets are going fast. Operators standing by. What you got there, son? I was just checking out this home light electric start gas trimmer. Electric gas? Now, Dad, it's a gas trimmer, but with an electric start. See, you just push this button. Let me see. It's pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> Feels good. The electric start gas powered trimmer from Home Light. So easy to start. You can't wait to get started. At AutoZone, most of our customers are folks who like to work on their cars themselves. But the ones who come in most often are those who work on cars for a living. Guys like Ed Graven. Now, Ed's garage is in Ogden, Utah, where most of the time you'll find him pulling an engine or sliding under a car. And just about every day, he drives past a half dozen other parts stores on his way to AutoZone. Because Ed knows that when it comes to getting the right part for the right price, there's just no place better than AutoZone. Extreme. Try strapping yourself with a 4,000 pound rocket. Then run at 220. Six inches away from 41 of your closest friends. Real close. NASCAR. Extreme and always has been. Bush. The official beer of NASCAR and always has been. Our next Winston Cup event on TBS will be at Pocono Raceway July 21st for the Miller 500. Pocono's unique triangular shaped track that has three turns, each with a different radius, even the three straightaways are of different lengths. This uniqueness produces some of the most competitive and exciting racing in the Winston Cup Series. Pocono's first Winston Cup race of the season, the UAW GM Teamwork 500, presented by ProMotion Engine Treatment, is set for June 16th. Race fans ahead to Pocono Raceway will be treated to some of the prettiest scenery in the nation. The Pocono Mountain Resort area of northeastern Pennsylvania with its scenic mountain vistas, cool valley streams, quaint hotels, vast recreational centers, has a warm and friendly country atmosphere. Pocono Raceway is also noted for its creative giveaway promotions and its 1996 contest is called the ProMotion Engine Treatment Fantasy Sweepstakes. A race fan will win trips for two to the July 21st Miller 500 in Pocono, the August 3rd Brickyard 400, and the 1997 Daytona 500 plus $5,000 cash. To enter the sweepstakes, call 1-800-800-0987 or send your name, address, and phone number on a 3x5 piece of paper to the address on the screen. A complete set of rules and a free Pocono Raceway brochure are available by calling 1-800-RACEWAY. Let me make a correction. I think I said 166, 156 is when that incident took place. Ten cars involved in this incident on that start. Let's take a ride and a listen down into turn one. Bobby Levon just getting through. Another angle. Sport. Wow. Reverse angle. You know, uh, watching this, uh, Kyle was on the very bottom of the racetrack. I'm not sure that Musgrave knew he was there. I'm, I'm not sure of that contact there. We really can't blame anybody. It was just a racing thing that Kyle Petty was on the bottom there. And Musgraves was uh, taking care of the inside there, and they touched. So you want to be a racer. Let's go to uh, Patty Moise with Ted Musgrave. Yes, we're here in the garage with Ted uh, out of the race early. Tell us what happened from your perspective, Ted. 
Well, I guess by the replays you can see that. Uh, hey, that's a good film clip. That'll be in the world's biggest bloopers there. Uh, you know, you just can't do that at Charlotte. You know, on a restart like that, going three wide through the trial line. You know, it's 600 miles. I don't know what Kyle's problem was, but, you know, like I say, it was just... It was a dumb move, and it shouldn't happen like that. But, hey, you know, it took a lot of good cars out of the race. I'm sorry about that, you know, but I was trying to get a lap back just like I, you know, should. And my car was starting to work pretty good for once. And, uh, like I say, I'm not really sure. I just got hit in the left rear pretty good, and there was just no way to hang on with it, you know, 170, 180 miles an hour sideways. And sorry for us of the guys. Well, it's a tough break, and will you all be able to get the car back in just to make some points? That'd be it, just to make some points. That thing is really destroyed. But, you know, here, as competitive as it is, you just got to go back out and get as many points as you are. Like I said, there's a lot of cars in the garage area, and we want to see if we can get some more. That's the story here. Back to you, Ken. Ted Musgrave. We'll take a quick break and be back. We are now at lap 161 in the Coca-Cola 600 here at Charlotte, North Carolina. The Coca-Cola 600 is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. By True Value, official hardware store of NASCAR and garages everywhere. And by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Cars, they're cool. True Value, official hardware store of NASCAR, IRL, IROC, and garages everywhere. Come into True Value and get Lubricator 2001 Super Engine Treatment and Valvoline 10W30, 10W40, or 5W30 motor oil. For cars that can benefit from higher octane, Texaco Clean System 3, Power Plus, and Power Premium Gasoline are formulated to clean your engine's intake valve fuel injectors, and combustion chambers while you're driving. For smooth starts and sure acceleration, just give us five tanks. And you may feel like you've left your old car behind. Oh, add more light to your car. Take it to the star. Protect your engine. Remember, pure oil now, pure oil later. Pure oil later. If it's Saturday night, it's steak night. That's just the way it's always been. And I always use my favorite steak sauce. It's tradition. What? Yeah, sometimes I'm in the mood for something different. Something rich. Robust. Something zesty. Hearty. It's there. And it's great. Mm. A steak sauce for me? Are you serious? Can you do that? Yeah. All right. Mm. New A1 Thick and Hearty. Try it now at Subway on a steak and cheese sub. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Duraloo, NASCAR MasterCard, and by Health Source. Fourth caution of the day. Pretty much caution free for a while. We just can't get by this 140 to lap 160 area. The Duralube aerial platform showing you as the lights come on here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. We get ready for some night racing. And I believe they posted the number 42. Let's take another look at what happened and get a perspective from Dick Burke. Yeah, watch Dale Earnhardt, the black car, about the third or fourth back. He is one of the few guys that gets through this thing unscathed and right behind him, Ricky Craven. This is the stuff of champions. Watch these two guys thread the needle. Watch that black number three. He sees it all happening in front of him. Jacks up on the brakes, goes to the outside, gets through this thing. Craven follows him through. Everybody in front of him, everybody behind him gets stacked up. Those two cars got through well. That's how you make a championship. Petty penalized five laps, being brought on pit road, five lap penalty. Let's go to Randy Pembert. Well, I'm standing in front of Leo Jackson's uh, Skull Chevy as Andy Petrie and the guys work on Greg Sachs's machine. I walked down to the hospital, talked to Max Helton, preacher for MRO. He did speak with Rusty Wallace uh, in the infield care center. I asked him if Rusty was okay. He said, yeah, but he's very, very mad. And he went to the motorhome. So uh, we won't be speaking with Rusty anytime soon as they continue to work on uh, the 33 car. So the 42 being brought in, 
we're told for a five lap penalty here you see Kyle Petty got into the back of Musgrave and then away it all went from there Earnhardt the survivor more than the intimidator tonight He's got a little mark on the very front of that car, but that may have been some time earlier because I did not see him touch a car in that incident. Just a little tiny bruised in comparison to what could have happened to him. Steve Burns is waiting by down in that pit area. Steve? Richard Childers told Dale Earnhardt, keep an eye on the 24 car and the 88. If they come down pit road, we'll top off the gas. But we're not quite sure if they're going to do it now. He said, watch the leaders. Average speed at 140.6. There's Kyle Petty in. Car being looked over. Five lap penalty. Well, that's got to hurt. Sitting on pit road for five laps. There you see Felix Sabetis, the owner of the car. Cal Petty won this race in 1987. Billy Woodruff is crew chief. Looking it over, nobody's happy there. Nothing to be happy about. Mm -mm. There's your leader, Jeff Gordon. And what about racing day and then night? Jeff Gordon, now in control of the event, gave us this answer to that very question. If you're not running well, you say, hey, that's okay. You know, uh, our car set up for later on the night when it cools down. Um, but you've got to be prepared for anything. And that's one thing that Ray's really good at is, is rubbers and, and, uh, and, you know, when he wants to put wedge in. We've even got, you know, adjustments now where we can uh, raise and lower the track bar. we got to decide on sticker tires or scuff tires. We might do something different during the day than we do at night. So there's a lot of variation, especially in a 600-mile race. Felix Sabetis down there arguing with Buster. I can tell you who's going to win this argument, the NASCAR. You can see he's very unhappy there. Buster just has to stand and listen to all of it. Nothing's going to change. MasterCard race summary, mid-race report brought to you by MBNA, NASCAR MasterCard, the official card of NASCAR. Six leaders thus far, 10 lead changes. We get 32 in the whole race last year, averaging 140 miles an hour. One caution for so long, then four all of a sudden. And there you see the lap leaders today. Dave Marcus, before he had a bad crash that put him out of the event. Show the world you're a NASCAR fan when you carry the MBNA NASCAR MasterCard called 1-800-34-NASCAR to request uh, to only card with your favorite driver right on the card. Get yours by calling 1-800-34-NASCAR. Green is down. And we're back to it. This is at lap 166 as they take green. Well, let's see if we can get a lap in here. Derek Cook, they're trying to get it back in the uh, lead lap, but look at the 88 of uh, Jarrett come on the inside. Whoa. Who was that? It was Earnhardt. Top to bottom. No, no sorry, Lord. 22 Burton. And he, he Burton got away top with to it. bottom. He got away. You're absolutely right. All the way from the top of two, all the way to the bottom, midway down that 1,300 foot back stretch. Look at Jeff Gordon and, and uh, Jared go down in the turn one, side by side, and right behind them, Dale Earnhardt is a peel off in the turn one. We're new to the game, that's a Ford Chevy battle. Chevy on the outside, Ford on the inside. Did they get out with Earnhardt there in that mixture? They're going to hold Kyle Petty two more laps, apparently conversation between Felix and the officials. The officials have decided two more laps is in order as a result of that conversation. Two extra laps in the penalty box because uh, Kyle or someone used some expertise, they said. Look at this move. Jarrett down on the inside. Squeezes through and here comes Earnhardt. Oh. 
three of them in there together. All right, got this race going again, and we've got three guys under a blanket up in front with Craven back and forth. Labonte's in fifth, Schrader's in sixth, Terry Labonte is in seventh, Irvin in eighth, Marlin in ninth, Martin in tenth, and Michael Waltrip in eleventh, ragged fender and all. Here comes Earnhardt up under Jared as they head down towards the first turn. This is why we sell tickets to 150,000 people and millions watching all over the country. It isn't any better racing. I don't care where you go than NASCAR. Battle further back in the pack. In the right-hand box, battle for fourth. Labonte, Schrader, Labonte. Nothing going out there. Up in front, Gordon, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Labonte. Well, Jarrett has it his way for the moment. Remind you that 12 cars a lap down. Actually, he's not a lap down. He just picked up his lap, but he is not in the fight for the lead. That's Derek Cope in the 12, running in 13th position. 12 cars now in the lead lap. Jeff Gordon there. They're talking about the Chevrolet. He's right on the white line, but he's got company. Look at Earnhardt moving in there in second place. They're moving away from Dale Jarrett just a little bit. Classic American stock car racing battle mm -hmm. right here. Take a look at this. Bobby Labonte, Terry Labonte, side by side. Brothers Labonte in a great scrap for fourth. And Terry takes it away. Hey, he's going to be around. He's going to be tough. This is one of the guys they said earlier was going to win this. Arnold Palmer picked Dale Earnhardt to win. He follows the racing. Nobody want to ever bet against Earnhardt in a big time stock car. Oh, oh, look at him wiggle though. If he does that a few more times, I'll bet against him because I tell you what, he was in a lot of trouble there. That car broke loose on him. He turned back into it to correct it and shot up the racetrack. Only a man with his ability could have caught that car. Yeah, Dale Jarrett's going to crowd him, too, so he didn't get that thing to wiggle a little bit more. Meanwhile, look at Gordon on the bottom. Cope on the high side. They're going to try to put Gordon a lap down again. Put Cope a lap down. Uh, Cope, Cope, yeah. Cope, put Cope a lap down in that 13th position. And he's given it a real go to stay up there. Look at that struggle by Derek Cope, a two-time winner on the Winston Cup circle. And here comes Gordon right back after him another time. Meanwhile, they better look at that 88 car there. Dale, Dale Jarrett's on a move right now. He's on the outside of the racetrack. Look at this car right in the center part of the corner. It is very strong. And Earnhardt nudges down on the inside, nuzzles his way up through. He's on his way to second. And here comes Ward Burton in that 22 car as well. He is not right in there for the position. No. Ward Burton is all the way in the 22nd spot, but he is very fast. Couple laps down. That loose condition on Earnhardt's car in turn one and two is really bothering. Oh. Look at Jerry. Whoa, he did it. Oh, oh. snookered him. Yeah. Right down the inside, there was no room to go, and Dale Jarrett stuck it in there. How about that? Write that one down, lap 174, Jarrett on the inside and then some. Is that more courage or more skill, buddy Maker? That, that was bravery right there, because I'm going to tell you, he drove her down in there, but I tell you, Dale Jarrett all year long has been strong, and this race car is good, and he's doing what you have to do to win 600 mile races. Hey, we got to look at this, that again. Look at this thing. Three huh. wide going down in the corner. You see, right there, Jeff Gordon shows a lot of maturity. He backs out, gets that car under control, dives to the bottom of the racetrack. That could have been an incident. He tried to be too bad. 261st mile was when that one took place. And Jeremy Mayfield has just dropped out with a broken timing chain. His birthday is tomorrow. Maybe you could send him a timing chain for his birthday. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, he said his wife didn't buy him anything, so at least he doesn't think she did. Taking a look here at Ernie Irvin following Schrader from Schrader's car in seventh place looking back. Ricky Craven up on the outside as Schrader tries to move beneath him. Schrader shooting for six. Not too bad for a car that last night his crew chief said wouldn't run. 
wouldn't run? Yeah, yeah. Schrader has been one of those hot and cold guys here during all this stuff in anticipation of the 600. He sometimes is extremely fast and sometimes not so. And in the last practice session yesterday, Ricky Craven wobbles a little bit coming off the corner. He just wasn't quick and they really didn't know what to do last night. Well, I guess they made the right decisions because Schrader's hot right now. He's running very well. I think we're all excited to see Craven start. I'm amazed that at better than halfway, he's still in here and mixing it up because he can talk about how strong he is and how good he feels, but he's in a lot of hurt from that crash at Talladega. Meanwhile, take a look here. Texas Terry in that fourth spot. He's moved around Earnhardt. Whoop. Earnhardt just gives it a little nudge down. The Intimidator and the Iceman. I'm guaranteeing you, they got a lot of nicknames for their great racers. It is, it's, you, you have one opinion or the other about Earnhardt, but I think Larry Woody in the Tennessean once said it best. He said, Dale Earnhardt doesn't drive for the dough. He races for the sheer enjoyment of it. He chases checkered flags for the same reason that a beagle chases rabbits. <laughs> it's his nature. <laughs> yeah, remember a week ago when we saw Earnhardt on the bottom and Terry Labonte upstairs and the Winston Select and they wound up coming together. That's how Michael Waltrip got by both of them for the win, but so far so good. They're really being smooth right now. And look at Terry Labonte around Earnhardt and into third. It's Dale Jarrett in first, Gordon in second. And Terry Labonte now into third, Earnhardt falling to fourth, Bobby Labonte in fifth, Schrader is sixth, Irvin seven, Craven eight, Marlon and Martin round out the top ten. I talked to uh, Terry Labonte about that incident, and he said he watched the replays two or three times, and he said Earnhardt didn't do a thing I wouldn't have done. It was just good, hard racing. Impressed with Derek Cope able to stay up there running as well as he is. And way high on the racetrack. Bobby Allison moving from Hueytown over here into the, uh, into the uh, Charlotte area. Got, got himself a new sponsor. Everyone wishes them all well with the Babcock home furnishings board these days. Look at Schrader beginning to show some muscle on the inside again, bringing that Hendrick Budweiser number 25 back up into this one another notch. Some smoke from the left rear corner of the number 18 car. This is a battle for fifth position. Inside with Schrader now. Let's see, he's turning 8,400 as he went down the back straightaway there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing, guys, but I can tell it was way over You're there. You're just an old gossip. <laughs> you just keep looking over people's shoulders. Well, this Schrader car, you want to look over his shoulder. Remember last year, yeah. he was leading at the 500-mile mark, and the motor blew up shortly after that? Sounds pretty good right now, though, doesn't it, buddy? He does that, and he's making a move on the last year's winner, Bobby Labonte, trying to get by him on the inside. Just these cars are not as smooth as they look like from a distance. You can see they really move around when the racetrack is. You can see from that end car camera. Yep. But this is where they run their best. As Neil Bonnet used to say, hey, when you're coming up to speed, they're all junk. But when you get up there where they're supposed to be, they're wonderful to drive. They are that. Catch that glimpse of Ernie Irvin down in the left-hand corner. Ernie Irvin now running in sixth position. Changed the motor in that car this morning. Last time they did that was, what, 1991? Davey Allison was the driver. Changed the motor right before this race and went off and won it. How about Ernie Urban getting right back into this fight? There's another, another guy a lot of people would cheer for if he could possibly win it. Still got 11 cars. And remember, we went almost halfway without any sign of a, of a caution flag out here. You'd have thought that we'd only had three or four. They've kept 11 cars up in that lead lap. Of the 42 starters, we've lost, what, five, six. They're back behind the Some of them are coming back out. They're going to run for points. They may be bruised and battered, but they're going to get them back out. This guy right there, Ernie Irvin, I'll tell you what. You want to talk about bravery? He would go bear hunting with the switch. I guarantee you, this guy is stout. I'll tell you what impresses me about Ernie Irvin is you watch Schrader get back to Ernie Irvin in a moment. Look at him. He's so smooth with that wheel. That's that sprint car experience. He just, he never unwinds that wheel too much. Schrader is on top of him. Led 169 laps in this race last year. Boy, he needs a win. He'd love to stop having to answer reporters' questions about when are you going to win, why can't you win, what's happening here. 
I'm amazed he keeps his cool as well as he does about that. Well, I think he's got his confidence, Ken. You know, he knows he's a fine race car driver with an outstanding race team. And look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, 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 baby. Three wide down and the Spencer back straight in the middle. Yeah. And he's going to do it. Look at this. Schrader on the inside. Terry Labonte on. This is the fourth, folks. That 23 cars a lap down. He's running in 22nd position, a lap down. But don't look for Jimmy Spencer to give you an inch. No matter how many positions or laps he's down, he'll run it just as hard as he can. Even going out of the parking lot, he wouldn't give you an inch, that guy. Here comes Ernie Irvin. And Ernie Irvin on the inside of Schrader. Randy? Well, Kenny uh, Schrader said, hey, guys, car's good, windshield's bad. Uh, we need to really clean this thing good, and oh. we're going to pit in about 25 laps. Okay. Ernie Urban got squirrely, had to step off for a sec. Saw Schrader correct in the midst of all of that. Oh, three wide again. <laughs> Martin getting by, and Schrader taking a big backup to 11th spot. Want to see a save? How about this? Take a look at the lead. There's Jarrett and Gordon first and second. Now you talk about a save, folks. This is a save. Watch the 28. Black and gold. Orange and orange. Trader on the top. Ernie Irvin on the bottom. Whoa! Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah, Ricky Craven yeah. dodges yet another bullet on the outside. Yeah. Folks, that is talent. That wasn't luck. He drove that race car back straight. Now, that is pure talent won the Babe Dick the Babe Zaharias Award last year in memory of that great Olympian. And it's given to individuals who demonstrate courageous action in overcoming adversity to excel in sport. Nobody more deserving than this man, Ernie Irvin. Rocky Blyer won it, Roy Campanella, the great Shirley Muldowney, John Olerud, and Ernie Irvin. And look at him go. Yeah, he's going to win a Winston Cup race before long, maybe even today. Mm -hmm. Look at Michael Waltrip has caught up a little bit. They've got some fender work done on that car. It's a little bit better than it was before. Still not perfect. Ernie Irvin's car basically unmarked so far. Running really well. Steve Burns can give us more on car 28, Ernie Irvin. Up until a moment ago when Ernie about lost it, he was really starting to come through traffic. On the last pit stop, they took a rubber out of the left rear and put on scuffed tires. Now, Buddy Baker could probably talk about what scuffed tires are going to do here tonight. Well, I can tell you what taking the rubber out of the left rear would do. This is a spacer that actually makes the spring uh, stronger, and when you pull the rubber out, it softens it up. It takes some of the pressure off the drive wheel on the left rear, and that keeps it from pushing as much. It makes it a little bit looser. There you see Ernie Urban, and there you see the leaders. Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon at it. We've got a wreck in turn two. Oh, oh, and a terrible wreck. One car is absolutely disintegrated as Johnny Benson clobbered a car coming down off, and Ricky Craven has been caught up in it. But another car was absolutely destroyed. It may have been that number 41. Oh, it's Craven. Oh, Ricky Craven. Terrible impact. He was full in the throttle. And I believe they're asking for the rescue squad for Johnny Benson, who took him right through the door. Johnny Benson, Grand National Champion, moved up, took over the Penzo car this year. This is in turn two. We are at lap 194. And there you see the mark down across the track. And on the bottom, Craven driving hurt from that terrible crash at Talladega. Collected. We can show you some of it. There you see the 30 up on the outside in the wall. In just a moment, it's going to start to descend across the track. It's down off the 24 degree banking at about maybe 14, 15 degrees, and here it comes. Down the bank. There is no movement to the car at this time. At that point, the Ricky Craven is going to air 
Craven didn't take it full. He took it on the side of the car and then slid up the track. Ken, as bad as that was, it could have been much worse. Much that worse. That tank done its job. It did not catch on fire. Thank goodness. Much worse. Rescue squad for Johnny Benson out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Leader, Jarrett on pit road. Here's Steve Burns. Dale Jarrett just took four tires, as did Dale Earnhardt. No chassis adjustments. The 28 car of Ernie Irvin is also up. They're going to the left side of that car. Ernie is off and away. Everybody taking four tires did not see any chassis adjustments. We'll take a break and be back with you in just a moment at the 37th annual Coca-Cola 600 from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'll take this anytime you're ready, fellas. I got this, guys. No, yeah. Oh, I got it. I got an NASCAR MasterCard right here. Nah, guys, I'll get this. I got my own NASCAR well, MasterCard. Well, mine's better. Well, how do you figure that? Well, obviously, my picture's on it. Well, I got my picture on mine, too. Well, I'm better looking. No, no, I'm 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 Join NASCAR's greatest drivers and carry your own official NASCAR MasterCard. To apply, call 1-800-34-NASCAR. Excuse me. If they ever finish arguing, tell them this meal's on the team. The official NASCAR MasterCard. Apply today. <laughs> When it's 120 degrees on the track, and it feels like 300 in the suit. There's only one way to drink the Coca-Cola one liter. Ice cold and inverted. Need a pit stop? Grab the one liter in the genuine Coca-Cola bottle. get the most out of this IndyCar, Patrick Racing put Scott Pruitt behind the wheel. They built a team that could get it in and out of the pits in the blink of an eye. And they chose a battery they can depend on to get it started. The Duralast battery from AutoZone. The same Duralast you can depend on to start your car. So don't settle for anything less. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. Congratulations to Lowe's on your 50th anniversary. I have always been impressed with the excellent quality and selection at Lowe's. I have bought power tools, lawn mowers, light fixtures, a TV set, a washing machine, etc. And I've never had any trouble with any of it. Come to think of it, I also met my husband at Lowe's. Wish I could say the same thing about him. Just kidding. Ha ha. Lowe's knows home improvement. We've known it for 50 years. Goodyear Aquatread revolutionized wet traction design. Now Goodyear introduces the first tire with a lifetime tread life warranty. The new all-season Infinitred. Its tread is guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Call 1-800-GOODYEAR. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitred. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. Back at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, our pictures of the speed plant tonight from the Duralube aerial platform. Our fifth caution of the night, and our fifth really in the last 30 or so laps here as we bring you coverage from the STP Pit Communication Center. Johnny Benson Jr. and Ricky Craven get together very hard over a turn two, a frightening moment in Ken Squire. All of a sudden, we were caution-free for so long, now all of a sudden no one can seem to get hold of this racetrack. Yeah, and, and um, again, drop the temperature down had some caution periods it's so hard to come back up after a caution period but the long night was for johnny benson he was up in that wall he was trying to hold the car in the wall it just wouldn't hold and the results were as follows here comes craven in the 41 and craven is diving to the bottom trying to miss him and can't get can't get by it shears the side off Craven's car and sends 32-year-old Johnny Benson spinning to rest here just on the bottom of turn number two. Johnny Benson was running in 12th, one lap down. Craven was in six when the incident took place. And they have already removed Johnny Benson from the car 
and they have taken him to the infield care center as we speak. We'll take a break and be back with you. Gordon and Earnhardt up in front. Jarrett Labonte, third and fourth. Schrader to fifth. Mark Martin to sixth. Labonte, Marlon, Urban, and Waldrop. Michael round out the top. Ten. Whatever he is, he destroys. You can't win! I'm gonna drop him like a bad hat. You stand up and fight this guy hard. He rips at the trees of the long shots. A little you can beat him. Now you're a tiger. You said you're a fighter. Then fight! You're going down. Go oh, on. Run over him! You know, a lot of people who work on their cars will only shop at AutoZone. They depend on us for the best quality parts and low prices every day. They come in, get what they need, and then get back to work. Because you see, they believe if you want the job done right, you do it yourself. Well, at AutoZone, we couldn't agree more. Because when you take the time and the effort to work on your car yourself, you ought to be choosy about where you shop. We just thank you for choosing AutoZone. Want to make painting easier? Change your roller to a Wagner cordless power roller. There's less mess, less hassle, and less bending over. Because you control the flow of paint. So you can just keep on rolling. In fact, with the power roller and its accessories, you'll get professional results nearly twice as fast. It even turns cleanup into an easy job. So get a cordless power roller from Wagner and transform every room in your house. When cars raced at an awesome five miles per hour, Mobile Oil was there. When a race car broke a hundred, Mobile was in it. Mobile was in the winner of the first race across America. And since then, Mobile has been in more Indy 500 winners than any other oil in the history of Indy. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Amico, Exide, and by Food Lion. There is the 21, the Wood Brothers car, and what a return he's making. He's into 10th position, and they keep working on that car. They've massaged it in every one of these caution periods, trying to get it back up after it got clipped earlier, and here it comes another time. They and they have literally made a front end for this car. That's the new sheet metal there where they have formed a fender trying to get some sort of aerodynamics so they can continue to run the speeds that they need to run. And I wonder how that one will fit in the wind tunnel, buddy. <laughs> or fit the NASCAR template, either one. But I'll bet this is ten times that they've been in, and every time they get in, this whole crew of people just goes to work on the right front, and aerodynamics are the consideration here. This is a very fast racetrack, and they want to get it just right, or at least as right as they possibly can. You see Eddie Wood on the far right, and uh, uh, I think that he is masterminding that, that fabrication work that's being done. Now, I'm being told right now, we're getting word that Ricky Craven is speaking and that he is okay. Uh, I don't know if he is in the field hospital. This is a very unofficial report. S Steve Burns can give us more, I believe, right now on Ricky Craven. Steve. Ken, we just came down into the pit, and some of the mechanics have just come back here to round up the pit box and equipment, and they said they have talked to Ricky. They think his legs are bruised up, but the initial report is they say he's okay, so that's the good news. Let's go to Randy Pemberton. Well, that's correct. Uh, Ricky Craven is in the infield care center. He walked in from the ambulance. Uh, so uh, they, they believe Craven is going to be all right. As far as Johnny Benson, they have him sitting up in there. He's talking alert. The worst injury from what the guys say coming out of the hospital that have seen him is Johnny bent his glasses up pretty good. But uh, I'll guarantee he's going to be sore. Just tremendous. Uh, just the attribute that these guys get for building these cars as solid as they are to take hits like that. And these guys are up talking in the infield care center. Uh, well, that's the best news of the night. We're yeah. ready to go racing again. There goes the good side of car number 30 back into the garage area. Craven and Benson out, but they will race again. Remember this year's Daytona 500, Michael Waltrip of John Andretti spinning car. The Wood Brothers, they came back, finished 10th in the lead lap. Tonight, Michael is 10th. He is on the lead lap. Looks like he's ready to do business. 
good news about Ricky Craven and Johnny Benson, two outstanding young men, great new competitors in this very tough game. Real, real good news. Watch Ward Burton, that 22 that has been so very fast. If he can get by Gordon on this restart, he's got a potential to reclaim his lap. 20th position as he comes to the line. That's the 22 car. Gordon, Earnhardt, Jarrett, one, two, three. Terry Labonte, fourth, Schrader, Martin, Bobby Labonte, seven. Sterling Marlin and Ernie Urban, ninth, and Michael Waltrip in 10th. Ten. 10 cars lead line. Burton's down two. He's got to get two laps back. This could be one of them right here. <laughs> Look who else is back there trying to reclaim a lap. Derek Cope. Well, he's yeah, not going to do it this here. time. Yeah, they're not going to do it this Whoa. time. Oh, boy. Boy, that's as close as you can come right there. Ward Burton almost got into him there. Look. Do I see three wide again? Yep. <laughs> that 190 mark, 190 miles per hour, they say in the turn one, and there's two in there, three wide. Well, that big crash didn't frighten those guys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They don't get paid to be scared. I was scared. <laughs> we were all scared, except Baker. I was scared too, but I'll <laughs> tell you right now. You see, uh, right in front of this group right here, that Jared on the bottom, he was held up in this uh, mix up there, and Terry Labonte got by him to uh, take third spot. And look who's in the second, the three-time winner of the 600. Ready to go hunting. Whoa, he's still loose getting in the uh, corner. He's you still see the loose back of two. that car? That's one and two, that car is really working back and forth. Very loose getting in the corner. Imagine what it'd be like if he wasn't. Didn't seem to slow him down any getting in the turn three. He's really driving that car extra hard right now. One and two seems to be uh, the problem for Earnhardt. Three and four, he runs quite well. Here are a couple of racers who are so centered in their thinking, in their personal balance with these cars. They're like great skiers. They're like great any kind of athletes. They are simply centered. They can take a car to the very edge where you're right ready to fall off over the side and bring it back. Two brilliant talents at work. Gordon versus Earnhardt for the lead. This is a goodie. 2.06 is the lap we just completed. Boy, you look at that and you see all the, all the uh, experience in the world and all the determination in the world. Gordon being the de determination and Earnhardt with all the experience. And let's not forget Terry Labonte. Cool, calm, consistent Terry back there in third. Closing up again and bringing Dale Jarrett right with him in the 88. Four cars battling for the lead here. Jared, who surely has proven himself. A couple of years ago, when he first got the ride with Robert Gates, people said, well, I don't know about Dale Jarrett, but he's proven he was deserving of that ride, and then some. 309 miles down. Oh. Bernhardt determined, looking for the lead. Coming in on Gordon. And look, nice. at, and look at Jarrett there, buddy, coming down to the bottom. Great move up there in four. He may be the fastest car on the track because Jarrett was caught up a while ago. Now look at him go right on the white line there. You see Earnhardt's car moving way up the racetrack. He's having to catch that car when it breaks the Dale Jarrett may be developing a problem, however. Steve Burns can tell us more. So often we talk about mechanical problems. Dale Jarrett radioed his crew members and said, go to the truck and get a green Gatorade. He is becoming dehydrated. It's not that hot down here, but it is very, very humid. So we'll keep the tabs on that story and get back to you. That's kind of like waiting to go on stage. Uh, a lot of times your mouth will dry out, and that's what happens when you're running really well and get really excited like that in your water jug. Uh, you can't get a drink of water or anything. Your mouth dries out and you really become quite uh, stagnant as far as the way you feel about things. So he's probably wanting a good drink, but that's not going to bother him when he gets up there and starts wrestling for the lead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we've got one out of control. Todd Bodine is around and in the wall. Todd Bodine spinning at four, gets it down to the bottom. Is that the sixth caution? Wally Dolan back and he made contact there going this before. Yeah. Hmm. The 94 car, sixth caution of the night, is out for Todd Bodine. 
running in 18th position, and you saw what happened, racing back to the line with Gordon first, Earnhardt in second, Jared, Terry Labonte, Ken Schrader, Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, Bobby Labonte, Irvin, and Michael Waldrop, the top ten. Another look at this one. Well, the 94 there is Todd Bodine. Now, you watch right here. Dollenbach just gets him on the left rear barely and turns him sideways. He starts down the track and now back up into the outside wall. Second angle. Here it comes. Boom. Long time to think about it there, buddy. Uh, he hit hard on that left side, too. You can see it hit in the wall, jump up there another time. You can see the left rear took most of the impact, though. Sliding, glancing blow, however, Todd Bodine. Lucky. Lap 211, caution out six times. Gordon and Earnhardt, Jarrett and Labonte fighting for the lead. I was just a little boy. I asked my mother, what should I be? Shall I be handsome? Shall I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Kay said I, said I. Just because your dreams have been crushed doesn't mean your boys have to be. 100% cotton, cut for comfort. Fruit of the loom. Really, really comfortable underwear. It's 400 miles of rocky rutted trails with enough bumps and jumps to shake a truck to pieces. But if you think an endurance race through the Arizona desert is a real torture test for a truck, just imagine what it can do to a battery. That's why Parker 400 winners Dan Smith and Dave Ashley chose a battery they could depend on to go the distance. The Duralast battery. The same Duralast you can depend on for your car, because it's the one we stock at AutoZone. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. I think it is. Yeah, it's my new Wagner Power Painter. Look, can you edge with it? Yeah, you can edge like this or adjust it to control the paint up close. And when I'm done, I'm going to switch nozzles and stain my deck. Do a lot of other jobs I've been meaning to do. Well, does it clean up easy? Yeah, it's quicker than you think. Why am I painting this by hand? Good question. Get a Wagner. Steel maker of the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide also makes a full line of trimmers with enough power to handle almost any size job it could be one of the more useful tools you'll ever own available in steel territory starting at 79.95 taking four tires, no chassis adjustments. Ernie Irvin also away, four tire changes. So, field reorganizing. So you want to be a racer? Come along, take a ride, Todd Bodine. I'll give you some of my salary. Make sure I never get back in one of these things again. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. Steve Burns can update the, uh, the story down here on Pit Road from this pit stop. Steve? Well, Ken, we are right in front of Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett. They both took four tires, as did Ernie Irvin. However, Jeff Gordon and Ken Schrader only took two. Also, Sterling Marlin taking just two tires. What do you think that? Remember yesterday, that four-tire, two-tire strategy in the Grand National Race? Yeah. See, there's the 22 back in again. Remember 94 when Gordon took only two and Rusty took four and Gordon won? 
Randy Pemberton, give us more on that Rusty Wallace crash from earlier. Let's get to Randy. Well, uh, Rusty, we said, wasn't happy. These guys aren't happy either. they got about 12 guys working on the Miller car back here. Robin, you guys continue to thrash. Can you get this thing out? I know the frame's been. It's, it's pretty much wiped out, but uh, we know if we can get another five or six laps, we might can pick up another couple positions. It's a damn shame. Uh, we went from 43rd to 9th. And uh, the car was running good. We were working on it as, as things were going along. And, uh, you know, you get people up there driving like idiots. This is what happens. Rob, what else are they going to do this car to get it back out? Uh, we're replacing uh, radiator and oil cooler and stuff like that right now. Just the vitals. <laughs> Tough break for these guys, too. Mm-hmm. There you see the Family Channel crew still trying to get Musgrave back in the show. And there you see the Charlotte Motor Speedway under the lights on this Memorial Day weekend for the 37th Annual 600. It's been a wild one thus far. Marlin is now going to be the leader. He got out of the pits in a hurry, and he will be leading at lap 215 with Gordon second. Schrader now into third. Wouldn't that be something if Ken Schrader turns it around and pulls this one out of the fire? He's won at Charlotte before, and he is long overdue to win a race. Complete shuffle of that crew over the winter time. all new people. Bill Hammer came on as the crew chief. Schrader has basically given up running short tracks, focused entirely on trying to get going in Winston Cup and win more races. And Ray Abraham sort of is the manager overall on the deal. Yep. It's a real team effort. The whole team is working trying to help Schrader get back where he belongs, and that's up front. Well, back in 91, he was right in the midst of things here. Had that uh, great second place finish in this event to Davey Allison. Here he is knocking on the door again. Maybe he will win his fifth career Winston Cup race tonight. It'd be something special if we could see Schrader pull that off. Think there'd be some Budweiser drunk? Oh, no, <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> Baker would be the first one down here. <laughs> no, We'd no. have to work the last one. No, 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 moving right along here. <laughs> Uh, looking for his first win at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Ken Schrader. Now, a lot of made two tire changes that time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether the guys who took just two are fast or whether they are eaten up when this green flag drops. Didn't make a whole lot of difference yesterday in the Bush Grand National. It is the same tire here. These cars weigh just 100 pounds more. Here's an experiment in progress. Sterling Marlin with the advantage. First time he's had a chance up in front tonight after a very good pit stop. Tony Glover and company for the Morgan McClure folks. Field is away, and as they begin to break loose on this start, let's see, on the shuffle, here's Earnhardt settling down on the out. Oh, Jarrett getting just a little loose there. Whoa. Boy, you can just feel the electricity when they start off that corner so close to each other, and the car is jumping around just a little bit, just a little touch, and boy, it starts a lot of trouble. These fans are going to have to take an extra day off when this one's over and get rested up. Patty Louise is with Papa Don. What's he got to say, Patty? Todd, um, out of the race early, you were running the top 20. Give us your perspective on what happened. Well, it's, it's a shame because we actually had a pretty good car. We, we were running pretty decent. Wally picked me up into the wall earlier off of four and, and messed the car up a little bit, but we got it straightened out. And we we're running pretty good again, and uh, you know he he got a little he got under me, and, and my spotter told me he was there, so I stayed up, and he just must have pushed up into me or whatever and, and turned us around. It's a shame because McDonald's and all the people that you know everything was going good for the night. How many more races do you perceive you'll be having in this car? It's hard to say, uh, you know, it just depends on how long it takes Bill to heal up and, you know, we hope he heals as fast as possible and gets here as quick as we can because, you know, we want him back. I understand that. Back up to Ken. That's the story here. Thanks, Patty Moise. Patty Moise on the mend after that bad crash. She had at Rockingham doing a great job for us tonight. Had a wild ride yesterday out here in the 300. Martin in 10th spot. There's another car that has had an awful lot of work done to it. He was involved in that earlier wreck, and they've worked a lot on the aerodynamics of that one as well, virtually replacing the right rear corner of that car. Randy, what have you found out down there about the city? Well, uh, the bottom line was marky has got an oil leak, a little bit of an oil leak, so I came to the pits right after that pit stop. They were wiping it up off of pit road. Very slight. I asked the guys how it was, and they gave me the, and eh, not, they're not quite sure, so, uh, they're going to go out there and ride around. They, the car's still running good, but uh, not a good sign when you have an oil leak. You hear the motor sound. 
33 with Greg Sachs back out on the track again. They've done some more work on that. 24 and 4 in the lead. Here they come. It's the four car in front, Sterling Marlin. Takes that car that won at Talladega and puts it just in front of Jeff Gordon. Schrader is back there in third. Been a while since he's tasted victory. What, 1991? Look at here comes Gordon on the bottom. You can see Marlon's oh. car take off just a little bit in the corner there, going up a little bit out of the groove. Gordon made a move to the inside. Now he takes the position. And here comes Schrader with Earnhardt. Four of them in there together. So bumping and bumping. Yeah, and I saw some sparks there too with the four of them in there together. You're going to see more. Look at this five cars all fighting for the lead. See, more sparks. Somebody's bumping down on the racetrack. Somebody's running low in that group of five. Gordon back into first. Marlin to second. Jarrett sneaks along against the wall. And here comes Terry Lamonti back into it. Looks like uh, Sterling might be just a little bit off right now. Uh, I think he might have took on two tires. I'm not sure, but he is dropping back just a little bit. And what is uh, Dale Earnhardt's crew doing while all this is going on out on the track, Steve? Oh, Ken, look, they're all eating up with stress. <laughs> look, Chocolate Myers, all the guys just had Domino's pizza delivered. You know, it is getting kind of late, uh, but they wouldn't give us any. Yeah, they're just all torn up down here. Yeah, I can tell. You know, that reminds you of Harry Hyde, doesn't it? Yeah. At least ostensibly, Tim Richmond was said to one time come into the pits for a pit stop, and Hyde and his bunch were sitting there eating an ice cream, said, you go around for a few more laps till we get done. <laughs> Look at Jarrett. He's not done. Dale Jarrett making the move on Earnhardt for a second spot and looking for Gordon. Yeah, I don't think of just a few times in Earnhardt's life have I ever seen anybody pass him on the outside in the corner. That Jarrett is hooked up tell you this racing is so much fun look at Schrader down on the inside he's got Marlin in can he hold him good run it looks like he's on his way into a spot yep. Schrader's going to pick one up wonder how Rick Hendrick is doing right now one of his cars is in the lead another of his cars is in fourth another of his cars is in sixth he's got three cars in the race all of them in the top six right now Jeff Gordon is driving one of the races of his career. It was fun to see him win the 600, but this one is something. Here comes Dale Jarrett after him. And Dale Jarrett fades to the high side to make the move. That's incredible right there. That's one of the fastest guys here in the corners. And Jarrett is going by on the outside. Lap 227 market on your program. Here comes Dale Jarrett into the lead. And here comes Earnhardt. Well, four tires versus two tires. Here we go. Back comes Gordon on the bottom. You talk about a race. Well, Steve Grissom's fan could say, yada, yada, do. This is why, <laughs> folks, they all sat in this grandstand in that pouring rain this afternoon. Half this crowd just sat here, wouldn't even go to their cars in the parking lot to get out of it. They were waiting to see this. The most competitive racing in the world. They just turned it up a notch. Here comes Dale Jarrett out in front, Gordon and Earnhardt. Rick Hendricks on Jeff Gordon at Atlanta back in 91, and Rick said he went in the corner. The car was so loose, it was just taking the tires apart. He ran lap after lap like that. I stood there waiting for the wreck. It never happened. And two days later, I gave that kid a contract. Yeah, you know what's funny? We did a cover story on Gordon in Stock Car Magazine, and, and Rick Hendrick read it. He came to me after that, and he said, I didn't know all that stuff about him winning all those sprint car races and midget races. <laughs> It really was the Atlanta deal that sealed it, not that whole prior career. Look at Mark Martin coming on. Eighth and ninth position here. Mark is in ninth. Terry Labonte, uh, rather Bobby Labonte is there with him. And just in front of them, see Michael Waltrip in that eighth position. Boy, what a story that is. Huh? After being involved in that early accident, they've worked on that car, worked on it on pit road. Same car that won the select last weekend here. Waltrip doing a beautiful job with it. And as you can see down the straightaway, he's holding his own with Mark Martin. Mark is a little bit stronger right in this area of the racetrack, but as they hit the straightaway, the 21 car, Michael Walker, is fast. For fourth position, battles everywhere. Here's Labonte going up against Schrader. Labonte, Terry Labonte, the Iceman, holds on to that fourth position. 
and Schrader trying to melt him down. That was a great shot of Schrader's hand, very still in the corner. As you see there at the top part of the left-hand corner, he's barely moving his arm as he goes through the corner. That car is working. Lake Speed just coming back on the track with such a great run earlier. And now look at this. Here's Mark Martin on the inside, and look at Michael Waltrip. The Wood Brothers put that car in the emergency room, and Martin getting through on the bottom. Oh, look at the right front. Wow. It's, the the bodywork is not working so well anymore. It looks like it's coming apart a little it's bit. It's crumpled up, hasn't it? Yeah. That is coyote ugly, folks. <laughs> that thing, well, but look at this. Both of them have been mended up a little bit. Yeah, they're both wounded ducklings. Wounded ducklings? Well, wounded ducks, whatever. <laughs> they're wounded. <laughs> 24-3, getting ready to get into it. Here comes Gordon and Earnhardt. And you know, Earnhardt hasn't led a lap yet. Pays five bonus points to lead a lap. He wants to do that. He wants those five points. So I think he can't stand to have anybody ahead. It reminds me when Baker took me out for a night. He wanted to take me and really show me Myrtle Beach. And yeah. we saw. Yeah. Took him to the tough man fights, right? <laughs> that was his idea of a great cultural night out. Oh. Every time you turn around, we got another fight out here between a couple of tough men, and you got it right now. Here comes Gordon and Earnhardt right after him. These guys will put it to each other. Hey, you know what, Buddy Baker? I've been meaning to ask you. Earnhardt had 38 career starts here at Charlotte before tonight. Won five of them. Earned up $1.3 million. You had 38 starts. Won four. You only won $419,000. Uh, <laughs> Where'd the money go, well, buddy? I'll tell you what. Probably just me, finished the no, booth for the night. Let me let me explain this. We both won four times here, but look at this grandstand right now and the millions of people out there that are watching on TV. The money's better. These guys deserve what they're getting. I don't feel bad a bit that I didn't make any more than I did because you've got to remember, I could buy an acre of land for $1,400. <laughs> and now that same acre down here? Oh, boy, about 25000 30000 yeah, Look at this battle for seventh spot. There's Ernie Urban, and he's uh, he's in there strong. Right under Sterling Marlin takes that sixth position. Jimmy Spencer still giving it a good go tonight. He's back in 20th position. Being shown on lap 233 as the leaders are on 235. And they're all beginning. With these cars, when you look, they ran at Martinsville. They ran on a half mile. They really chewed these things up tonight mile and a half track all these fast speeds and they're still banging and flamming on each other you know they're running as fast on this mile and a half as they ran at daytona and talladega not so very long ago as well and they are running so close together they really are running as if they're on a half mile at high speed you know a lot of people watching this race don't realize right at this point on the racetrack they're running close to 200 miles an hour as they turn into the corner here they are really fast. We've had telemetry before. You can see 195 to 197 as they enter the corner. 355 and a half miles are complete, and it's a great race. You still have 10 cars in the lead lap and four battling for the lead. Stay tuned. Finish not too far away. What you got there, son? I'm just checking out this home light electric start gas trimmer. Electric gas? Now, Dad, it's a gas trimmer, but with an electric start. See, you just push this button. Let me see. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Feels good. The electric start gas-powered trimmer from Home Light. So easy to start. You can't wait to get started. There's no track in the world that's tougher on brakes than the one in Martinsville, Virginia. And when drivers take the green flag here, they all have one thing in common, the same brand of brakes. Because without them, you can't come down this straightaway at 120 miles an hour and still make it through the turn. So which brand do the top drivers use to get them through 500 laps at Martinsville? Performance Friction Carbon Metallic. And we stock them at AutoZone. Before cars had phones, cup holders, or even roofs, Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivan, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. 
right now. Get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitreds. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Back once again, Charlotte Motor Speedway under the lights. Winston Cup racing at its best. It's the 37th annual Coca-Cola 600 with the three-time 600 winner Buddy Baker, Dick Bergen of Stock Car Magazine. I'm Ken Squire. Thrilled to bring you this great event on TBS. Hey, don't forget Pocono, Pennsylvania coming up real soon right here on TBS. Well, we're showing 241 laps. We should be getting down to caution time. Right now, number 88, Dale Jarrett's trying to check out. Meanwhile, trying to check up Jeff Gordon is Dale Earnhardt. Take a look at that. That's for second spot. The three and the 24 sandwiched in between them is car number 99. And that machine is being shown a little further back. Hey, before we give you that story, Patty Moise is over at the uh, care center in the infield. Let's get an update from Patty. Yes, both drivers are okay. Ricky Craven has been transported to the hospital, mainly for observation because of his injuries from the earlier wreck. The doctor also said that Johnny Vincent is still in there. He's up, he's alert, he's talking. They're monitoring his carbon monoxide level. That's pretty much the story here. The good news is they're both okay. Thanks, Patty. Patty's been in the crash house a few times and in Rockingham uh, recently. Good to see her getting back out and get going again. You know, for the first time down in the Kidd area, she is doing a great job. Jacksonville, Florida, late Mary Dell and Sawyer out here racing tonight, and, and she is indeed. Well, here we are with a, what, four-second advantage now on Jarrett? You, huh? Somebody needs to tell, tell Dale Jarrett if he expects a lot of TV coverage, he's got to slow down just a little bit. He's just motoring off into the sunset right at the moment. That car is working so well, he's right on the bottom of the racetrack. He's actually moving away from the group. Let's not forget we've got some more pit stops coming up, and the rest of these guys who are chasing him will have an opportunity to adjust their cars, the air pressure, the track bar, and all the rest of it, try to get some more speed out of their race car. Now hold the phone. Here we go for fourth place again. Terry Labonte and Schrader are at. They are actually running down Jeff Gordon just in front of them there. Nose to tail there. The three Hendricks cars are going to have to battle each other in just a second. Every time you just think you got enough time to get a glass of water <laughs> or something, here they go again. This is for Ford. Here comes Schrader after Terry Labonte. Just eases down to the inside. He doesn't ease up. Right back in the throttle hard. How hot is it? As we get cooler tonight, but how hot in that car right now? I would say right now they're very comfortable because uh, what's rain today, I would say probably uh, 95 to 100 degrees inside. And, and on a sunny day, it, it gets up to 135 degrees inside a race car. 95 or 100. It's swell, 95 or 100 degrees. It's just great. But it's a dry heat, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But you know the thing that's amazing is so many guys after these long races pop out of these cars as if they had been in just perfectly comfortable conditions. Nice race going on here with with Michael Waltrip again in that 21 car, Ernie Irvin in the 28, and looking for his spot. Eighth position at stake here, that front fender. Boy, doesn't that one look like it took a punch in the nose? Ooh, who got the stab there? Derek Cope. <laughs> Bobby Labonte giving him a move over nod. Bobby Labonte bottoming out pretty bad, getting into turn one. I, I don't know why. They probably adjusted the bite in the car some, but every time he goes into turn one, the black smoke just rolls out in front of the car. Bobby Labonte, number 18 in 10th position. Just in front of him, Ernie Irvin in ninth. Michael Waltrip is in 8th. And it may be torn up a little, but that Wood Brothers car is still in this thing to stay. What do you think about it? Is that the tires and the body coming together making that smoke? Either that or somebody touched him on the left rear, but it was smoking just a bit. Meanwhile, for 4th position, there's Terry Labonte and Schrader hammering away. Don't say hammer, Rick Hendrick may be listening to <laughs> They don't hammer anymore. A couple of them took each other out a couple of years ago at Martinsville. They had a, a group meeting the next day. So, listen, we beat everybody else. We don't beat each other. <laughs> and it's Schrader down to the inside, cleanly going by Terry Labonte. And look who else is back in the picture again, too. Ward Burton in that Pontiac. 
Yeah. Still fighting to regain the lap she lost early still on. Still two down in 19th position. Terry Labonte there, the Iceman, says it's a cool head that usually has a degree of success in running the 600. You have to be a little bit patient, but you can't be too very patient because you can get a lap down pretty easy. Uh, you just got to use your head a little bit, and, and you know you got to stay out of trouble. Uh, if you get in trouble, you're not going to be there at the end. Mm -hmm. Ward Burton running well, been through four engines in anticipation of this event. You know this this uh, Terry Labonte these days. He and Gordon each have seven top ten finishes in the last eight races. He's just come on like he's 30 points behind Earnhardt and Jarrett right now. What a terrific turnaround for him in the last couple of years. Now look at this. Here comes the 18. That is Bobby Labonte and Ernie Irvin. And from Bobby Labonte's in car, look over there to the left. Smoke or no smoke, he's going by. <laughs> Lion Interstate Batteries car right there on the bottom. And Ernie Irvin right with him. They need a bowl of cereal. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that pepperoni pizza that was down there with chocolate Myers. that those guys were using. There's something wrong with Ernie Irvin. He had dropped it back. He's uh, not running the pace that he was. Just uh, a little bit back there. Got some folks on their way down there to see what the story is on Ernie Irvin. And Steve Burns can tell us perhaps right now the story on Ernie Irvin. Ken, we're heading right up to Larry McReynolds right now to see if there is a problem. Larry, are you guys, are you guys having a problem right now? Yeah. I'll be, I'll be so glad to get out of Charlotte. We have changed this place back to two solid weeks. It's like the top of our fence is so narrow. We make a small adjustment, we go loose. We make another small adjustment. It's just been one of them two weeks, so we're real loose right now. We predicted it was going to get tighter as the night time come along. Well, we've been talking all night long about tires, but there are a lot of teams here who will tell you that this is the most fickle, finicky racetrack of any of them on the circuit. That the racetrack itself changes literally from moment to moment, and you don't have to do anything to the race car. The race car will run well on a few laps, and then it'll run just lousy, and then it'll come back again, and these guys obviously are having a problem chasing it. You saw car two out there, Rusty Wallace a moment ago. He's back on the track, way back. He has completed just 165 laps. We're at lap 255, but he's out there trying to pick up some points. Dale Jarrett's picking up some time by almost five seconds. He's got him covered here. That's the biggest lead anybody's enjoyed in the 37th Coca-Cola 600. you get improved performance for a while but only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat fused so Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums Bosch Platinum the ultimate spark plug enter the performance zone with Split Fire Performance B Spark Plug. You get your passing gear, you're gone. Experts say Split Fire Performance B Spark Plugs mean more horsepower and better mileage. The difference in gas miles has been fantastic. Enter the Performance Zone only with Split Fire Performance Bs, guaranteed. And for more power at any RPM, get Split Fire Performance B Twin Core Wires. When you're looking for the place with the best for your car, when it's quality and service you need. But where you put, you get an answer, and your money goes far. Forget this right is the key. Get to the motivated, celebrated, federated auto parts. Federated. 
2,600 stores offering expert advice and the best in brand name parts. Promotional fees and consideration has been paid by the following. Esob Welding. Esob is the official supplier of welding and cutting products for Petty Enterprises. Lowe's. And by Haynes. Race fans call 1-800-HAYNES-2-U for blank Haynes Beefy Tea. Only $4.99. 1-800-HAYNES-2-U. Call now. Back live at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Rick Benjamin here in the STP Pit Communication Center. If you'd like to know even more about tonight's Coca-Cola 600, you can go online. Phil Parsons is our TBS online host tonight. And there's the address, HTTP CNNCOM chat. Closing in on 260 laps down, Dale Jarrett with a big lead. You know, Ken Square, the last four of these events have been won by Chevrolets. Maybe this is going to be Ford's night. I tell you what, it could be Dale Jarrett's night. I mean, that Winston Million... That Winston Million, remember the one that Elliott pulled off? Yeah. Hey, he's right on the edge. Yeah, he sure is because he won Daytona. This is one of the races. All you got to do is win three. If he wins this thing tonight and wins Darlington, there's a million-dollar bonus. Of course, he'll get a couple of bucks for winning tonight, too, out of this $1.7 million purse. 18 just passed the 21 out there. That's Bobby Labonte moving around Michael Walter. That would put Bobby Labonte up to the eighth and drop Michael Walter in the ninth. Now take a look up here. Here comes that number five, Terry Labonte, making a move on Jeff Gordon. This is for fourth spot. Goodbye. I would speculate right now that the 24 car of Jeff Gordon is going away just a little bit in the handling. You heard him play a while ago, Larry Reynolds. Just a little too much wedge, just a little too much air pressure. You're out of the ballpark until you get to work on it again. See Wallace in the two. Looking like a Saturday night modified car. Well, he's picked up three or four spots out here as he tries to gain points. He's up to 37. Remember, he said he was 39th a little while ago. That a lot of work. That thing's a mess. Well, let's remember, too, Gordon only took two tires on that last stop. The guys who were ahead of him took four. All the guys who were ahead of him took four. Well, that's it, then. That's the whole problem. You cannot take that gamble anymore. You need to have four fresh tires on here the way you're running in the corner anymore. Hey, we're, we're getting on the scanner that Gordon, Gordon may be in in four laps, but he may come in early. But there is something to miss as far as those tires are concerned. Hmm. And that could happen to Jarrett just as easily before this thing's over. He's also, he's also watching in his mirror because right behind him is Mark Martin. Mark is closing in on him as well. He's just lost ground to Schrader. Labonte has gotten by him. Ten cars in the lead lap, nearly halfway before we saw the first sign of caution. Then, boom, it was all over. It was like the 4th of July. There were fireworks everywhere. Six cautions, lots of big wrecks. The good news is nobody was hurt. The most severe, and I've got to take a provisio on that, we're waiting for more word on Johnny Benson and on Ricky Craven. They're still being examined. They're conscious. They're talking. They're okay. They want to do a lot more checking. You can see Mark Martin right now moving in on Jeff Gordon. You can see Jeff's car is very, very slow in the center part of the corner. Mark should be able to just go up there and go right on by. There goes the Valvoline number six from Jack Roush racing after that Chevrolet, and Randy can tell us more about that 24 car. Well, about the last 10 laps or so, Gordon has been talking about the car just being extremely loose. They're looking at pitting on lap one or 267. They're going to take a half a round of wedge out of the right rear. And you better believe it's going to be four tires on the green. So perhaps in another lap, we're going to see Jeff Gordon get in a little early here about lap 399. Hmm? Again, that worked for this group in uh, 1994 when they won the World 600. They made a pit stop, only taking on two, but you see him coming in now. And that was at the end of the race, though, buddy. Yeah, That's it was. the difference. Yeah. They did this much earlier. But this is going to throw them out of sync. And how many times have we seen a 600 or a 500 Charlotte won by the car that came out of sync? Randy's there. Well, I don't think this will put them out of sync, Ken, because what they're going to do is they're losing ground on the rubber they have on this car. So what they want to do is go ahead and pit early. Let's hope they don't get a caution. Then when they put new skins on this thing, they'll pick up time on the racetrack. So they're looking to pick up some time. Those guys are out there with older rubber. Now Jeff is down and away with four tires with an excellent, excellent 1930 pit stop. Leaders just put him down. Yep. He just lost a lap in the pits. Well, he's got his work cut out for him now. 
Jared in first, Earnhardt is second, Schrader third, Terry Labonte fourth, Mark Martin is fifth, Sterling Marlin is sixth. And then you have Bobby Labonte in seventh with Michael Walsh of eighth, followed by Ernie Urban. And out back a lap down is Jeff Gordon. In that same lap is Derek Cope 11th, Ricky Rudd 12th, and in 13th, Bodine. Oh, there's a great view of that 24 degree banking. You see those lights? They shine off those mirrors and onto the track. Who would have ever believed, buddy, that you could make a lighting system so fine for a super speedway? He and I ran in the first race to ever run with the lights fixed like this, and it was so bright out there. When you run up behind the car, you can see inside of everything inside the car in front of you. That's how good the lighting is. It's a spectacular view from the grandstands here, just as it is from the television that you're watching at home. Pretty. We did watch this at night. Does the shadow bother at all? You Not at all. Speeds? You don't, you never see any shadows whatsoever. You can see us on the right oh, side just a this. little bit. Here comes the leader in. Wow, he didn't give anybody warning. Steve Burns is down there waiting. There's the red carpet Lisi, number 88 for Dale Jarrett from Robert Gates Racing. Todd Parrott, the pit crew, await this car on the road. Ken Todd Parrott's brother, Brad Parrott, is responsible for keeping air pressure. He says they're going to take a half pound out of the right front. Now, this will be a four-tire change. The right side, as you can see, was very, very quick. No chassis adjustments with the exception of a half pound of air out of the right front. Dale Jarrett is down and away. Terry Labonte, 20.3 seconds. 20.3 and Terry Labonte right behind him on pit road. Terry Labonte, from the number five, waiting to come out. Still on, they've gone all the way around on that car, and Randy's there. Well, it was a wedge adjustment, and up on the left side, and four tires for Labonte. Down and away, the key will be, how much did Gordon pick up in car lengths by having tires for two laps? I can tell you how much this guy just picked up, five bonus points, he just led a lap. First time tonight? Yep. Earnhardt. I bet it's coming for Pizza Nell. I'll bet you it's all gone. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Chocolate Myers is down there. Yeah, that guy could care again. less about food right now. He's in pursuit That's of a 600-mile right. race right now. And another step up toward that eighth Winston Cup championship. That's on his mind a lot. And Jarrett's too. Jarrett's second in the points. Earnhardt leads the points at least coming into this event tonight. They're both taking championship for sure. This team went through another change of leadership and the crew chief, David Smith, respected, well-liked guy, has stepped up there where Andy Petrie had been, where Shelmerdine had been, and they just keep on motoring. Yeah. Maybe years ago, everybody said, oh, they've just got it all together and what a perfect team. And then they lost a motor builder and then another motor builder and people come in and keep replacing each other. And yet this team simply motors on in the front. It's got a lot of depth. Depth is the word. The depth and also great notes. Let me tell you, when you build a team, you keep your notes. And Richard Childress has been smart enough to keep all those good people together and interface and pay them and really come up. A couple of loose notes there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said earlier today that uh, there's nobody in this grandstand that's neutral about Dale Earnhardt. They're all wound up. As right now, the 25 Schrader is on pit road. Mark Martin, too. Randy's with Mark, uh, Mark Martin. Trader pits down just a ways for turn four. There goes the track bar adjustment, getting ready to go the wrenches in the rear of the Valvoline Ford. Four tire stops, four tire stop, left side tires, get ready to come off. Patty Malise. Yes, we're down here at the 25 pit. The Budweiser crew really pumped up for that stop. It was four tires, two cans of fuel, and it didn't look like any um, any chassis adjustments at all. Now to Steve Burns. Dale Earnhardt in, they go to the right side. This is one of the best pit crews in the business. John Malloy over the wall. Here they come around to the left side. Do not see a tire, or rather a chassis adjustment. Again, they do clean the windshield. Many teams have been complaining of that. Gas goes in. The left side tires are on, the car is down, and Dale Earnhardt's away. Trench warfare at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And that's where this race most likely will be won with this many running this tightly together. Those guys in the trenches will make the difference. Randy waiting on car number 18, Bobby Labonte, currently the leader as he came off the track. Bobby Labonte is in. Jimmy Maycar and the crew go to work on the interstate Chevy. Right side tires, don't see a wedge wrench, no track bar wrench going in as well. 
Right side's already done for the interstate team. Left side's getting ready to come off. Jack goes up. Car up in the air as Steve Grissom screams by to speed away. Pretty good pitch job for Bobby Labonte and crew. He's down and away. So we're back underway with... I would, did you see Michael Walter? Yeah, Michael Walter just coming out. Jared is pitted, so we've gone through that entire group that's in the front ten. We missed anybody? Don't think so. We're seeing Dolan back come in, and I think we would have our leader back as the 88 of Dale Jarrett. We'll take a break and be back with you. We're at lap 278. They came in around 275 up to 278 to make these pit stops in the 600. TBS presents Matlock Mason Mystery Monday. This Monday, beginning at 9.05 Eastern, Ben's Beachside Getaway serves up more than he expected. Everything I know leads back to these two girls. Then, at 11.05 Eastern, a pop star is murdered. I didn't kill her. And Perry counts down the top ten list of suspects. Just what are you getting at? Matlock Mason Mystery Monday, beginning at 9.05 Eastern Monday, turn to TBS. I'd rather be. There's a feeding frenzy going on now at your Tiger Shark dealer. So you can sink your teeth into your favorite Tiger Shark personal watercraft for as little as $99 a month. Or choose no down payment and no payments or interest until September 1996. So get to your Tiger Shark dealer now during our feeding frenzy. Because the deals have never been tastier. <laughs> Get free demo rides at participating dealers. Cars, they're cool. True Value, official hardware store of NASCAR, IRL, IROC, and garages everywhere. Hey, at True Value, you can get a deluxe foot pump from Custom Accessories and a Lubermatic Midget Grease Gun with Grease Cartridge. Dale Jarrett has just put Michael Waltrip a lap down. Michael running in the ninth position leaves eight cars up in that front lap with 282 laps. Now complete 423 of the 600 miles. Well, Michael Waltrip still my hero for going as fast as he is with the front end of that car that smashed up. You see the uh, number seven that's Jeff Bodine, and he is in the 12th position. There he is. And there's your leader, Jarrett, continuing to motor on away with Earnhardt, still staying in second spot. Labonte, third, Gordon, Schrader, Martin, Marlin, and Bobby Labonte comprising the front of the field. And here Jarrett is having. Won the clash at Daytona, won the Daytona 500. There he is in the lead here. You know, when Jeff Gordon come in a while ago, guys, everybody thought he was going to get out of sequence, but when they got the uh, stopwatches on him and, and got uh, looking at how fast he was running on new tires, they said, we can't stay out here on old tires to take a chance because he was about a second faster than the guys out there on new tires. So, so they ducked in and everybody's in sequence now and a great race coming up. Well, Jarrett was one of the very first drivers to arrive in the garage this morning. He said his strategy for tonight was to be patient. He didn't want to run too hard too soon. He said there will be a lot of cars in the lead lap for a long time. When that's done and over with, if we've got the right stuff, we're going to go. Well, time to go. And he is. They're doing a good job with him all the way around here. You know, they talked about him being dehydrated earlier. They had to get fluid into him. Look at the 25 and the 6 here a little further back. 25 and the 6 for Chris Fox, Schrader, and Martin. Look at Martin, though. That car is really strong from the center part out. He just put Kenny Schrader away down, coming out of turn two. And Schrader couldn't do a thing about it. Mark Martin just motored on by. Hmm. And that's right after the pit stops. So Martin's going to be strong. 
Dick Martin uh, run up there into fifth position. Rock Schrader to six, 25. Ooh, is he bottoming out? And they all, that, that turn one is where you usually see the sparks fly. Ken, there's a rise in the pavement there. As you start in the turn one, the car feels like it absolutely drops out from under you, and then it just bottoms out as it starts into the corner. Over last year, Clean sweep for Mark Martin. He won on Saturday, one on Sunday, one yesterday. We saw Rusty Wallace again. He worked his way up to 35th position as he keeps scrambling for points. You see him in the picture, and it is of note. Started 42nd, worked his way all the way into the front of the field, and got collected in this big melee going into turn number one. And that is the ugliest car on the racetrack. But it's out there. But it's the most beautiful car, I think, when it's all set up and ready to go. That yeah. number two is one beautiful piece of machinery. It's amazing. It sure isn't it. right now. Yeah, it's amazing they got it back out there at all. Also, at the end of the year, five points could be thousands of dollars. That's why he's out there. Could even be a championship. More sparks. Schrader this time. What's dragging when he goes through there, buddy? Well, it's probably the exhaust pipe hitting just a little bit as they start in there. The lowest part under the car, you can see it right there, the left rear, uh, right in front there, the exhaust was hitting just a little bit. Steve Grissom, 17th position at car number 29. There's the leader. There's Jarrett, bumping along in this race. And he has got one humongous lead right now. And take a look back to where... <laughs> Number three, Earnhardt is. Among us. That's huge, right? Large. Okay. <laughs> this is Dale Jarrett's best ever performance at Charlotte Motor Speedway in this division. 14 seconds? 14 seconds? That big. There's 22 back up again. That's Burton. He's in 19th spot. A quick report and, and a really good one, one we've been waiting for for some time. Rick Benjamin, please. Well, Ken, we're here at the SDP Fit Communication Center. In the years I've been doing this, few guys I've been as happy to see as Johnny Benson Jr. What happened out there? Not really sure. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure we cut a right front going into one, or at least I think it's that end. I don't remember what's end. And hit the wall pretty hard. And I don't know. I looked at the back of the car. I don't remember getting hit, so that's probably a good thing, though. You were fighting to keep the car up on the wall, and then you slid down the banking. Well, I guess. It looked that I, way. <laughs> I, I tell you, these guys at Pencho Pontiac just doing a super job. And this car we sat on a pole with at Atlanta. I thought, yeah. man, this car's pretty good. And now we hurt the back. So I told him, we finally, we can get rid of it now. It took a while. How do you feel? You were in the care center for a while. Yeah, I was, I'm just sore. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And it's going to be worse tomorrow on Tuesday, I think. But, you know, at least everybody's all right. I mean, I saw Ricky in there. And, that's when I found out I got hit, and he looks like he's doing good. And good. Like I say, I mean, he didn't need another wreck, you know. No. He just had that big Talladega wreck, and, and like I say, I mean, Ricky's a good competitor. I'm just, I'm sorry, you know, that he got in it, too, and like I say, it's just one of them things, I think. And you'll be ready for Dover next week. Not with that car. <laughs> we'll, have a, we'll have a brand new car for down there, so hopefully we'll be in good shape. All right, Johnny Benson, Jr., thanks for joining us. Good luck the rest of the season. Glad you're feeling fine. Ken? Grand Rapid, Michigan's best, Johnny Benson, Jr., Grand National Champion from a year ago, walking away from a disaster in turn two here at the Coca-Cola 600. And today was his first ever Grand Nat Winston Cup start at Charlotte. He'll remember it. Mm -hmm. Sure will, with an exclamation point. Dale Jarrett trying to put a couple of exclamation points together right now as he laps Lake Speed. <laughs> It takes 45 one hundredths of a second for a John Smoltz fastball to get to the plate. And they say this game is slow. Braves and Cubs, 4 Eastern Monday. Steel, maker of the number one selling brand of chainsaw worldwide, also makes a full line of trimmers with enough power to handle almost any size job. It could be one of the more useful tools you'll ever own. Steel Territory, starting at $79.95. To 
protect your engine, remember, pure oil now, pure oil later. Pure oil later. When cars raced at an awesome five miles per hour, mobile oil was there. When a race car broke a hundred, mobile was in it. Mobile was in the winner of the first race across America. And since then, Mobile has been in more Indy 500 winners than any other oil in the history of Indy. So if you think that all oils are alike, think about something. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Right now, get a $40 introductory manufacturer's rebate from Goodyear when you buy four Infinitred radials. Goodyear's longest-wearing passenger tire. That's $40 on four Goodyear Infinitreds. But hurry, this Goodyear offer ends soon. Remember when brakes were this simple? Today's braking systems are more complicated than ever. Still, Midas will keep them in top condition. They'll even guarantee new brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. Even if it becomes a classic. When Joe Gibbs originally hired Dale Jarrett, he said, I wanted somebody who worked their way up, paid the price, been through all of it. And I think that Dale Jarrett has. And of course, he proved that and went on to win for Joe Gibbs in Daytona a couple of years back. Here he is out in front, and he has the field covered by 14 seconds. He and the quality care team liked their setup at the Winston Select last Saturday. And he talked to us about it earlier. We're going to try to keep the car as close to that as we possibly can. Obviously, you got to have something a little bit different at 5 o'clock when we're going to start, but uh, we just want to make it to where we can adjust it and get back to there because we think the car was awful good there. Obviously, we gave up a little something trying to come from the back, but uh, last I checked, they're not going to invert the field any time during the 600, and we should be okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Putting Bobby Labonte a lap down now. Mm-hmm. And remember that Bobby Labonte is in eighth position. Bobby Labonte, eighth place car, going to lap down. You have seven cars, which are Jarrett, Earnhardt, Terry Labonte, Gordon, Martin, Schrader, Marlin, now being shown in that lead lap. Well, what a record Todd Parrott, the crew chief, has. Just getting started, whole brand new team. When you think about it, Larry McReynolds can't wait to leave Charlotte because their setup's not right. Look at the team car, how well it's running. Let's pan back through the field and show you some of the cars running tonight, folks. In the Coca-Cola 600, 302 laps have been completed of the 400. And there you see that 18 car, the Joe Gibbs car, now with Bobby Labonte at the keyboard. And he is being shown at the present time in eighth spot, eighth position for number 18. Taking a look at the next one around, and there's that 29 car. He's in the 18th spot, Steve Grissom, R2 Network car. A couple of laps down. Yep. Then you've got uh, Michael Waltrip out here tonight, and Michael still holds a ninth. He's one lap off the leader in the Wood Brothers car with that fender crumpled up over there. I was just fixing to say he's been awful fast, but he has damage to the right front corner. Take a look at the 33 car, and that's been battered some. That's a Presley. Greg Sachs. Greg Sachs now in it. Presley took that first lap to get the point. Sachs now aboard. That one got crashed down here in the first turn. And then comes the seven car. Yeah, he's looking for his top, first top 15 position finish. And right now he's in 11th. This would be his best finish of the year if he finishes here. Lap down. Jeff Bodine. A little further back, you've got, uh, I think you got the 16 car coming up here next. Yeah, and he's well back. That's Musgrave, and boy, was that battered. He battered. hates that car. Hates that car. He says, when this race <laughs> is over, that thing's going to be a show car. He doesn't want to drive it ever again. In the select, he said he brought a knife to a, a gunfight. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Mast in the number one, running in 12th position. Mast with a Hooters car in 12th position. A couple laps down. And you're going to see, uh, should see uh, Joe Nemechek come up here. And Nemechek, car number 87, all the way back in 26th spot. Ernie Urban right behind him, and he's running in 10th. Ernie Urban, been up there fighting it out all night, just off those leaders, in 10th. 
down the lap from the leaders. Going back through the field, there's the 99, and we should have uh, Burton in that one. And Jeff, uh, let's see, where is he running at present time? He has 19th spot. One of the Roush cars. Buddy Parrott is the crew chief there. Father of Todd and Brad. And there you see Earnhardt, the second place car. Still chasing Jarrett but right now. Jarrett's in the zone by himself. Here. And the 43. Well back. Bobby Hamilton. 30 second spot. Losing one of his positions. Mm -hmm. 75 Morgan Shepard. You can hardly see that thing. It's all painted up like camouflage. Is it there? Can we see it? Yes, it is. Okay. In the 81 car. One of the Wallace 21st. brothers, yeah. Kenny, Kenny Wallace. Kenny spun on pit road early in the race, but uh, he's been very, very diligent. He's still running a good hard race tonight. Terry Labonte, your third place runner in number five. This is almost settled down to a regular race after all the <laughs> stuff we had earlier. Yeah, don't count on it. <laughs> This thing's a long way from over. We've got almost 100 laps to go. Less than that. That's a little less. That's just a sprint race compared to what we had when we started there. And I'll tell you right now, it's with strategy and those last uh, minute uh, adjustments that you make when you make your last stop. Todd Bodine, who crashed in qualifying and tore up the car he wanted to run, he's running 22nd. He's given up three or four laps to the leaders, call it four. Look at Derek Cope, how high he is running in the corners. I've noticed that he's been running a line that nobody else has even tried yet. It must be working for him, though he's running quite well. 13th. Key Rudd. 14th spot. Same car that won the pole here last fall, not running so well today. And right behind him is that fourth place car of Jeff Gordon. He's in that lead lap. Seven cars in the lead lap at the present time what they do with that thing on the next ground to pit stop, see if they can adjust it back into contention. Right up the middle there, thank you very much. Take a look at Mark Martin staying in this thing in fifth spot, not too far behind Gordon. He's been in this thing all night long. But he always is. He's yeah. in everything. Yep. All night, all day, whenever they run, you'll find him around. Uh, DW, 49 years old. Gonna have a new crew chief for the Japanese race, you know. Is he really? Yeah, yeah. A guy called Win One Soon is gonna be the <laughs> Win One Soon oh. right, for the Japanese race. At the oh, end of the year. Did Baker oh, tell you that no, joke? No, Darrell Waltrip told that joke. He I, told it himself. He stole it from me. I had a dog named that one time. Win One Soon? Yeah, I did. It was a chow. What kind of a dog chow. was it? Chow, and you named it Win One Soon? Yeah. <laughs> Baker would do that with me. You had a chow named Win One Soon. I did. I won the day. Red chow or black chow? Right after I got him. <laughs> red chow or black chow? Red. Red one. Yeah. Ralph mm -hmm. Petty in the 42 car. He just came back from that big motorcycle run. They raised $600,000 for charity riding Harley Davidsons across America. I'd have ridden mine across America for nothing. Did you hear that the guys down in the pits, uh, there's uh, 25 Ken Schrader in six spot raised over ten thousand dollars today for scott brayton's daughter they yeah, have a little right. and our leader was right in the middle of all that too yeah. dale jarrett and his crew right in the middle of trying to raise all that money for scott brayton's young daughter for an education program for the future dig trickle uh, wasn't he grand yesterday uh, his third second place in the grand national race 20th spot right now 20th place for dick trickle with Dick Trickle riding right with him now. Dick Trickle, uh, he just gets younger or something. He just keeps driving that health source car. He's taken that ride over. And yesterday, he drove the Duralube car. Darn near won that race, Martin Beaton. And there you see the uh, six car again, Mark Martin. That's for position. Yep. Fourth spot. spot. Gordon's in fourth. Mark Martin is in sixth with a hand signal. Thank you. Appreciate you letting me by. Isn't that nice? You have a hand signal like that to let the people around you know because there's no lights apparently on the race cars. You can see that, but 
but uh, you have hand signals if you want them to pass on the inside, outside, or if you want them to drop back as you start in the corner because you're a little bit loose, you put your hand up like that, and you can see Garrett Cope drop back and uh, move up on the racetrack to give him free run. John Andretti now pulling on the pit road and number 37 running in 27th position. Andretti eases on down in. Anybody ever give you a bonus, a bogus hand signal, buddy? Yeah, I, like something was wrong in front and I backed off and the guy drove off into the sunset and I had to run him back down again. I didn't pay any attention to his hand signals anymore. Take a look at Mark Martin closing in on Jeff Gordon for fourth spot. Battle for position. Gordon right down the inside. 317 of the 400 laps run and this is it again a Ford Chevy battle four to the bottom Chevy on the outside they're pretty even getting into the corner now watch as they drop off in here you'll see right here Mark is just a little bit better getting in now Gordon fighting back to the outside as they come off the corner they've got Kenny Wallace right up in front of them he's going to be a pick for somebody Pick for Mark Martin. Well, he fades high. They give him Not room. high enough in that area. Yeah, he's been in the wall. Yeah, they gave him plenty of room, but... So Mark Martin picks up a position. He goes to fourth, and Jeff Gordon drops to fifth, and the leader's got himself some traffic to uh, fight a needle through now. There's Dick Trickle just in front of him. Uh, looks like Sterling Marlin, too, there. Yeah. About to lap the seventh place car. You know, Sterling Marlin's usually up there fighting for the lead, but this whole two weeks here at Charlotte, he has not had that car dialed in just like he wanted it. So, 319 laps, 478 and a half of the 600 miles are in the book. Stay with us. Coca-Cola 600 continues to ramble at Charlotte. Either through the door or through the window. It's your choice. Experience the rush that only a night of Clint Eastwood movies can give you. Friday, beginning at 8, only on TNT. from ortho kills up to twice as many weeds as other brands and it won't harm your lawn this is the texaco haviland stock car and this is the texaco haviland indy car and while these cars run on special fuels we figured it was still a good way to remind you that texaco clean system 3 gasolines give your car unsurpassed performance and texaco haviland formula 3 motor oil and Texaco antifreeze coolant provide complete protection. But if we really wanted you to remember our name, maybe we should have sponsored something slower. Get more life to your car. Jarrett on parade out in front puts a lap on Sterling Marlin the seventh place car and continues to draw away from the field. Now they've got another pit stop to make another tire change and we all know what happened to Dale Jarrett the other night when they ran the Winston Selectric. Yeah he got a set of tires that didn't agree with him and he went from being the fastest car on the racetrack to being not so the fastest car on the racetrack and they've got one more round of stops to go and a tire story may well play here. Or what the mechanics do to the car may well play. These cars are very sensitive. It is a finicky racetrack. A couple of pounds of air pressure can make all the difference. It could make somebody speed up or somebody slow down. If I was working on that 88, I'd put four tires on it clean the windshield. I would not work on the chassis when it comes in. It's really good right now. Did you see Kenny Wallace's hand cut out the window of the car, pointed to the left and said, come on by me on the left-hand side? Steve Burns can handle it here. Ken, they're leaving absolutely...
absolutely nothing to chance down here. Brad Parrott, the tire specialist, is checking valve stems. You know, the lug nuts are glued up to the wheels. They're making sure those are tight. They're leaving absolutely nothing to chance. The last pit stop, they took half a pound out of a tire. Not this time. As Buddy said, they're going to slap four skins on it and let it rip. This is not a time for massaging. No, not when it's sticking to that white line like it did through the corner. And it's flying down the straightaway. That's the other part that we hadn't mentioned. That car is extremely fast. They're all together tonight. Absolutely all together. Dale Jarrett riding on a rail, doing a brilliant job of driving the car. Pit crew has done its work. It's never a matter of just one thing. People who are new to racing, they go looking for the trick camshaft or the right crew chief or a good motor builder or whatever. But to have a performance like this, you have got to have absolutely every single element lined up. Jarrett looking for his sixth career win. tell you what he's the guy that gave me other than my father my father started me out racing but this guy right here put me in a race car i won my first major race with him i also won a 600 with him i wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for this guy right here ray, ray fox boy oh boy yeah and of course david pearson won for him here at charlotte 80 years old next week ray fox still looking good crew chief of junior johnson when junior won the daytona 500 great man he was the finest tuner ever in the sport as far as getting the ultimate out of the heads out of the carburetor he was the best at charlotte watching jared lead in the coca-cola 600 over earnhardt terry labonte mark martin jeff gordon ken schrader those cars and and also sterling mar well i'll take that back he's gone a lap down uh, we've got six cars left in that lead lap back to schrader running like a bullet right now and now 18 Bobby Labonte looks like his car is backing up well, he's way off the pace you can see him legs. around the bottom of the racetrack there he's really slowed up so the 18 the interstate batteries food lion number 18 he's waving him off he's coming in that's unfortunate defending champion in this race motor sounds good up downshift there coming into the pits randy's waiting for him down there i can see it i can see it and there he is he's in pits bobby labonte under the hood not a good sign for bobby labonte they're dumping gas no tires all they want to do is make it to the finish it is not running it's definitely flat with the hood up four tough break for bobby labonte mark martin pitting right behind him will be in in just a matter of laps and you can see them there looking to see if the a wire off or what's wrong. They're checking the motor over. It is skipping. Well, he had a second at Darlington. That's been his best performance this year. He's not going to duplicate what he did a year ago when he tore this house down at Charlotte. Just want to lap down. Sure, just went by him. Hey, buddy, the last time we came in for pit stops, Earnhardt ran five more laps than Jarrett. Jarrett pitted on 271. Earnhardt 276, so uh, Jared probably do almost any lap now to come in. But then the uh, distance to the end from here, we're at lap, what, 333? Did I read that right? Wow. Mm -hmm. That's going to have a lot to do with the outcome of this race. If somebody can stretch it a little bit now and make it with one more stop, mm -hmm. that could be the difference. Earnhardt historically does not get the best of gas mileage. He gets the best of horsepower, which eats up a good bit of fuel, and he doesn't get the best mileage. But Jarrett's come up a couple of times short on a fuel run, hasn't he? I mean, if you're going to get down to that, boy, I would sure look at Terry Labonte at number five. You would have to. He's very easy on the throttle and all. And a lot of people get better gas mileage because they drive so much easier on and off the accelerator. I getting a note here that we're going to see Earnhardt in about lap 338, four laps away. There's Earnhardt. 
with second place car. What's that interval? First to second, still about 14. 10. 10. 10.8. So Earnhardt's cut into Jarrett by. Gee, he cut into him by five seconds from what he had at one point. Now you've got Gordon on pit road. Jeff Gordon is in, fifth place car. Well, Hendrick Racing comes to a halt. Randy? You see the wedge wrench going in. One round of fight out of the right rear. There it is. One round, four tire stop. Want to get every ounce of fuel that they can get in because it's going to be close, although they think they can make it. Lap 335. It's a four tire stop for Gordon. Pretty good stop. Down and away. Leader on pit road. Steve Burns waiting for Dale Jarrett's pit stop. Will it be his last? We'll see. Steve? Ken, don't forget, last year at Pocono, Dale Jarrett won a race on fuel mileage. He's very easy on the throttle. He's got it in right now. Again, no chassis changes. They don't play any. Just four tires. The right side tires are being put on. The windshield is clean. The gas is in. It is going to be close, though. It is going to be close on mileage. The left side tires are on. Adjustment also for Terry Lavani. A little slow on the right side for the five team. Left side tires now getting ready to come off as they await Mark Martin's arrival on pit road. Tires going back on the Kellogg's car. Terry down and away. How do always with the 25 to stop? Yeah, the 25 cars in the pits is getting four tires and uh, two cans of fuel. I didn't see any pants adjustments and he's down and away. Leaders in and out. Not all of them. Haven't seen Earnhardt yet. That's the one we haven't seen, but you're about Here to. he comes. Final man in the group in the lead lap. Here's Earnhardt, easing down to speed. Steve Burns awaits the stop with a good wrench. Richard Childress car. Three-time winner of the 600. Brings it on down. Earnhardt's in, and it'll be interesting to see if they take four tires to try to make up track position on Dale Jarrett. They get the right side change. Come back around to get gas in. This will be a four-tire stop. The jack goes in. John Malloy has the car up. Left side's on. All the gas is in. Earnhardt down and away. Let's go to Randy. Now lean forward in with driver Mark Martin. Jack Rouse checked with Mitch Williams, the catch can man, last time by trying to figure out how much gas was less than the catch can of the last stop. Down and away. Four tires. Gas all over the place. Excellent stop for the Valvoline team. So there you have it. Leaders have all been in and out. There's Dale Jarrett back on the track, getting bottled up a little there. Going to, whoa! Having to whoa, get through the eye of the needle on that one. 99 not giving him uh, much spare room at all, as Jeff Burton was there, the guy that's running in 13th spot. Jarrett's away and flying for Ford. Will those colors stay up? We'll see and see shortly. He always seems like an old friend. Jimmy Stewart, Turner Classic Movies Star of the Month in May. For the greatest Jimmy Stewart films of all time and your little slice of movie heaven, call your cable company today and ask them to carry Turner Classic Movies. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality product at Napa's red, white, and blue sale. With Napa motor oil only 89 cents a quart, Contoured style bug shields for a low $29.99. And a combo pack of no-touch tire and wheel cleaners, just $2.99 after rebate. So come save some green at Napa's red, white, and blue sale. We keep America running. What makes the Chevy Monte Carlo so great? Aerodynamic balance and rear downforce. Born stroke, great horsepower. Absolutely minimal drag coefficient. Really nice map light. Monte Carlo has won more races than any other car in NASCAR Winston Cup history. Genuine Chevrolet. The cars more champions trust. For all kinds of reasons. What makes the Monte Carlo so good? <laughs> Me. Crazy for thinking that my love could hold you. Trying and crazy for crying, and I'm 
crazy for loving you. STP Son of a Gun Protectant makes vinyl truly shine. Leather more lustrous. And rubber more brilliant and beautiful. It works so well, in fact, some people even use it on cars. Son of a Gun Protectant and also Son of a Gun Citrus Cleaner by STP. We're at lap 344, and there you see Dale Jarrett, ever closer to victory in the 600. Behind him is Earnhardt in second, Terry Labonte in third, Gordon in fourth, Martin in fifth, and the sixth place car, Schrader, has just been lapped by Dale Jarrett. Greg Sachs going along their lap down in number 33 for Robert Presley. Started the car, Frank Ribb, who stepped out after about 25 or 30 laps. I'm going to change my vote and give the ugliest car in the racetrack award to number 33. Well, there's several strong candidates in that category. <laughs> Rusty Wallace is certainly one. Bobby Labonte is back on pit road. Falling off here now pretty dramatically, Bobby Labonte. Randy? We're going to go ahead and put some tires on it while they got it in here. You'll see the crew member taking out the window of the passenger side. That means they're going in to try to get to the battery compartment. They need to change the battery. It was going dead on them, so unbelievable. <laughs> if the battery goes dead in the interstate car, but it happens every now and again. As far as pit stops go, guys, uh, I believe everybody can make it from here on in. Well, don't necessarily blame the battery. There's a charging system involved that has to get that battery up to speed as well. Through working, trying to change it. Right there on the left rear, that's where the battery is at. He's taking it out right as we speak. Ward Burton, 22. Jimmy Spencer in the 23. This is for position. Burton is currently running in 13th spot. Waltrip is in that too. He's yeah. in that same gang. He's having a good night tonight, 15th spot. Everybody love to see Darrell Waltrip win another one. He will. I think he will. Hey, Baker. Uh-huh. Greg Fielding says, you can check in here. Jarrett has gone between green flag pit stops. First pit stop, he went 60 laps. The second one, he went 58 laps. And the third, 65. Laps to go following that last stop, 64. Sounds like he's in the window. He's in the window, just hope they got it all the way full. That's one thing you never know. And they put that gas can up there where if every drop goes in there or not. So it may be close. So Let's ask Todd Parrott about that. Steve Burns. These guys are conferring right now. Let's go right to the horse's mouth. Can you guys make it on gas? Yeah, I mean, right now it looks like we can make it by about a lap, maybe two laps. He's been saving fuel, of course, and having the lead that we got. He's been able to take care of it. Just thank the good Lord for a good, safe night. Things have gone good. Just hope this last 50 laps goes as good as the last night. Good luck. You guys have run great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Certainly took a lot of lessons from his dad, didn't he? <laughs> things have gone good. How about things have gone great? Well, so much for the Ford romp that was supposed to happen tonight. There's one Ford that's romping. I guess not all Fords are created equal, huh, buddy? <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. It's teams that make this race and what it is today. And uh, as you said, every Ford's not running like this ADA does right now, Dale Jarrett. Started down the street, Hickory Speedway. So many have started in this part of the world. It's created so many champions. In fact, his dad was promoting down there then, that year. We get to share the booth with on many good occasions. Could have been a pro golfer, still plays par. Darned it. Right now, he's hitting par out here in this world. Got this mile and a half covered. And Arnold Palmer's choice tonight. Dale Earnhardt sits right there in second. Who is his second choice tonight? As we get closer to the end, I'm going to remind some people of something I said during qualifying the other night about who might win this race, but I won't brag right now. You want to say that again? No. Oh. <laughs> Mark Martin in the seventh spot. In the, uh, check that, fifth in the fifth spot. spot. Fifth spot, yeah. looking for Jeff Gordon, who is in the fourth spot. And closing in pretty dramatically. 
Marty Irvin sandwiched in between them. You see the tape on the left front of Mark Martin's number six car. Irvin is ninth, a lap down. Getting close out there, getting tight. stays there in ninth spot. They're inside the window to get themselves home for the checkers. Can Jarrett do it? We'll see. When it's 120 degrees on the track, and it feels like 300 in the suit. There's only one way to drink the Coca-Cola one liter. Ice cold and inverted. Need a pit stop? Grab the one liter in the genuine Coca-Cola bottle. I do not drive to work. I do not drive to get from point A to point B. I do not drive to run away from the world. I just love to drive. The new 1996 Monte Carlo. Personal space from genuine Chevrolet. The cars more Americans trust. See your Chevy dealer for special 4.8% APR financing on Monte Carlo. When asked, 9 out of 10 people say they'd rather be on vacation than at home. Come on. I'm bored. Do you have to play? But I have to of course, most of the people they asked didn't own a John Deere, because in survey after survey, folks are more satisfied with John Deere than other lawn tractors. Honey, it's green. It sure is. <laughs> Nothing runs like a deer. They're cool. True Value, official hardware store of NASCAR, IRL, IROC, and garages everywhere. So hey, come into True Value and get Waxmaster's 9-inch Waxer Polisher and this Scepter 5-gallon plastic gas can. Ooh. Hmm. How about that for a shot? I don't think that Jeff Gordon's still giving it a pretty strong stab. Right after Mark Martin giving you those pictures off the back end of the number six Valvoline car. When a car gets that close to you in the middle part of the corner, right up under you like that, it really makes the car in front loose in the back. So uh, I imagine Mark Martin's got his hands full right at the moment when Jeff Gordon gets right up under him like that. Trying to help the tire wear a little in that number six. Mm. Bernhardt's kind of caught up here on Jimmy Spencer in the 23. Bernhardt running in second spot. Well behind the leader, Dale Jarrett. Spencer laps down, 13th. Back up to the uh, 6 and the 24. This is the best scramble on the track at the present time. And it's for fourth spot. Mark Martin still controlling that position. The four is driving a car that they call Blazer. It's a blazer, all right. It won Rockingham in 95 Atlanta. It's won Darlington twice. It won Dover. Holes at Indy, Darlington, and Rockingham. If only they could have got another mile an hour or so speed out of it. And then a blazer tonight. See who's... Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Jared, right behind those guys. He's got them covered. Oh, he is stout. 40 laps to go, folks. And Dale Jarrett is as tough as anything there is in the toughest race of them all, the Coca-Cola 600 here at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. I bet I know whose engine's going on that dynamometer tonight. That's right. Yeah, dyno, dyno, Jeff. I bet I know the first choice. <laughs> I bet Dale Jarrett will drive it this time on the dyno. What do you want to bet? <laughs> well, we'll see how that I suppose goes. that motor might blow up right on the finish line like one did years 1985. ago in the clash with the, <laughs> down there at Daytona. I remember that one. Yeah. Boom. 1985, right here, Darrell Waltrip wins the uh, the Winston and blows up coming across the line and everybody always wondered, how big was that motor? And he's around the 99 of uh, the 
is around Jeff Burton's car, and he is definitely closing down on those leaders. Boy, he is just destroying this field. Well, anybody that knows Robert Yates knows that they have good motors, but I'll guarantee you one thing. The size won't be it. It'll be horsepower. Yeah. And it won't be just the motor either, buddy. I'm sure that this is, you know, again, I can't stress enough the combination concept. They have just got it all together tonight. These two guys do too. I mean, they're running extremely well. Fourth and fifth, yep. Been right there all night long. It's just this one guy running a whole lot better than everybody else. Martin Gordon, fourth and fifth. But don't you think every other team wants to know how much horsepower is under the hood of that number 88 car? Inquiring minds yes. want to know. Yes. Isn't it, isn't it strange, though, that the guy that sits on the pole does not necessarily have the fastest car in the race? You know why? Well, most of them have a qualifying motor, and then they put a race motor in, and sometimes the guy on the pole is not the quickest car on the racetrack when the race starts. Yeah, and huge changes in the chassis as well. After qualifying, they'll take the four springs out, put four different springs in, four different shock absorbers, change all sorts of things in the car. It's a very different car to make a one-lap run for the pole versus a 400-lap run tonight. Number 19, running in 19th position. Dick Trickle just pulls on the pit road. There you see the 19 in there, the uh, health source car. Dick Trickle giving it a good ride. Final pit stop. Slapping on four tires. Loy Allen, the regular driver of that car, once Loy is healthy enough, he was heard of rocking him. Once he's healthy enough to return, Trick will have to give that ride up. It is Loy's regular ride. Say hi to Loy tonight. Wish you well. Oh boy, look at the left front of Trickle's car. Mm -hmm. He was off in the little bar here somewhere in the course of the six months. Sure was. So Mark Martin stays in front of Jeff Gordon. position is fourth on the field. Terry Labonte lies third. We haven't said too much about Terry, but there's not much to say about anyone except Dale Jarrett and Robert Yates. What a story Robert Yates is. The guy that is the overseer of the entire team down there. Robert Yates' father was my preacher when I was a little boy in, at the uh, Baptist Church here in Charlotte. Do any good? No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. i tell you what, I've had a hard time up here, folks. These guys have been eating me alive tonight. Well, let me ask you a really tough question, Buddy Baker. You led the most laps here in 1968, 1973. Is it possible that he could just get complacent, Dale Jarrett could just get complacent and lulled into, I've got the best race car, I've got this thing in the bag? That's old racing right there. Ned Jarrett's told us, boy, that's one thing you don't do is sit there and lose concentration because right now everything's working so well. He's on a, a ride right now of his lifetime. Believe you me, he's not going to give it away, I don't think. Sure doesn't look like he's going to do that right now as he continues to pour it on and pull away from the rest of the field in the Robert Yates car. The engine builder, Robert Yates, the team owner, the ninth and youngest child of a prominent Southern Baptist minister, a great minister, even though he had big. <laughs> Born about a little while after his twin brother. Oh, look at Schrader going down. And remember that Winston Million this really comes into play now. It looks like Jarrett is very close to the second step to that Winston Million, which will be decided at Darlington on Labor Day. Yeah, if he can win the Southern Prime he gets a $1 million bonus. Bill Elliott did it in 1985, and I'll tell you, he brought the house down. I'm sure Dale Jarrett would as well. There were two candidates. There were two candidates, Jarrett winning at Daytona in the 500, Sterling Marlin, Winner at Talladega. You want to know what a sandwich wrapper looks like on a race car at 200 miles an hour? Right there it is. It's hung on the hood pin as it goes around the racetrack. It'll eventually wear itself out, flapping around there. Oh. Jared about to lap his teammate Ernie Urban here. Oh, man. Ninth place car going down. Love Auto Racing. Want to get he's solid. Want to get really deeply involved with it? There is a help wanted sign down on the NASCAR trailer from Philmar Racing, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. They are looking for help. We get dozens and dozens of letters from people saying, how do I get involved? Well, if you're really, really good at working on race cars, 
Gilmar Racing, Concord, North Carolina, 28025. Anything but the very best, need not apply. A lot of stories about Robert Yates. You know, he worked as a, as a chef and a curb hop, as, and, I, and he lied, I don't know lied about his age, but he was probably only 15 or 16 to get money for parts. He had three jobs and went to school to keep on getting money to, to buy parts for stuff to learn about racing and building equipment. He, he's an incredible man. He is the son of a preacher and all, but I'll tell you something. He told somebody he outrun me in high school, and that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> That he outran you? Yeah, the, in his road car, he told somebody he outrun me one time. That never happened. Well, I'll tell you a story about it, and it is when he first formed the team, a one-car team with Davey Allison as his driver. He showed up at Daytona with no sponsor, deep in debt, trying to buy the team, and a lot of people wondered if they would even make it to the Daytona 500 when they had the car down there, and look at him now with a solid two-car team, one of the most respected car owners in the garage area. Robert Gates has really made it in Winston Cup racing, as have both of his drivers. Getting down to it, folks. About 25 laps to go. Next time by. And Dale Jarrett, hometown driver, comes from Concord, North Carolina, just a little bit north of uh, Charlotte. This is going to be a very warmly accepted win by this crowd. And these are the best critics in motorsport, this gang that comes to Charlotte. It's a racing gang. Now there's Terry Labonte, your third place car. And he's been smooth. He's been sort of out of the picture. He so often is. He's not in the picture. You don't see him mixing it up. You just find him there. You keep finding him digging right down to the end. Let me tell you how hard this guy digs. He's got two DNFs this year, but he came into this race leading the most laps of any other driver in 1996. And he's another guy who's had a... Oh, boy, look what's on the front of his car, right on the nose of that one. That's some kind of little piece of something or other on the grill area, and that could cost him something. The Hendrick cars, yeah, see it right there? Let me tell you guys something. That very thing put him out of the Daytona 500 and Rockingham. It's a piece of, of uh, paper, and you can see in Daytona, it went in the air duct on the top up there. It goes to carburetor, now it's not part of the radiator hot again. dog wrapper? That looks like a piece of plastic there. Uh -huh. That's not exactly a hot dog wrapper, but that's what got him in Daytona. And it's another reason why, if you're a race fan, whether you go to short track or long track, wherever you go, you just shovel that stuff in the pocket or something. It, it really is to the advantage of the guys out there competing. It doesn't matter what size track, short track on a Saturday night or six cars coming in. Here's Mark Martin back on pit road and Randy's waiting for him. Let's go to Randy Pemberton following the fifth place car. How'd you like to go just about 600 miles and get a flat on the right side? And that's exactly what he has. He burned the tire up on it evidently. Right side's going on. It'll be two two tires only for the Valvoline team. Down and away. Just about flipping the front front tire changer. Wow, what a bad break. Well, he had one four out of five. He's not going to win four out of six here. You know, I see the uh, damage on the uh, left front, but look at the right rear just behind the wheel there. Half of the quarter panel's gone. They've been working on that all night, buddy. Every time he's come into the pit area, they have been working on it. Just as earlier, they had been working on Michael Waltrip's right front area. They've had a crew in the left front and a crew in the right rear on these caution flights, time after time, trying to get the aerodynamics squared away. 35 cars remain on the track. 35. And up in front, we now have, what, four cars? Four or five cars in the lead lap. I think we just call it four with Martin falling away. And still, it's Dale Jarrett. What a steamroller he's been in this last 100 miles. Ken, when you're out in the lead like this, you can hear everything in that car moving. I'm telling you, he's sitting there right now. He can act. I bet you he thinks he can hear the wheel bearing when he goes down the straightaway. Mm -hmm. I've had big leads like that, boy. It's unnerving to have it. You'd rather be racing somebody if you want to know the truth. Yeah, and this is the longest race of the whole year, and if anything's going to go wrong, this is a place. Uh, he's got to be thinking right now, counting down every single lap. Well, he does have a habit of winning the big ones, though, doesn't he? I'll tell Jarrett. you what. Wow. You see Mark Martin there. If you want to see what new tires do compared to even as well as Jarrett's running now, look at Mark Martin go by him on the outside going into turn three. That's what new tires do. This may put him over a million dollars in earnings this year. He came in here having earned 
about seven hundred five thousand dollars in the early part of the season 11th race of the campaign and Dale Jarrett just indomitable out here today made some five million eight hundred thousand dollars in his racing career in the posted awards from Winston Cup alone and he looks like he's going to take a big step tonight let me tell you what, not too very far ahead of him is the number 24 car, Jeff oh. Gordon, who may go a lap down fourth place. Yeah. 382 complete of 400. Here he comes. Up on that 24 and that six again. Remember that six has gone down. He's in eighth position, Mark Mark. Uh, Urban is in ninth. Bodine, Jeff in tenth. Rick Mast, 11th. On the sixth car, there's news, and Randy Pemberton has it. Well, just in defense of Goodyear Tire and Rubber, uh, the tire was up. Mark Martin did not have a flat, but he felt the vibration, and it was better safe than sorry. So he brought it down pit road, but a tough break for the valve. Mm. Indeed. Vibration doesn't go away. You've got to go in. When you feel a vibration, you've just got to bring the race car in and have them have a look at it, see if they can get her fixed. Well, it may not have been a tire. You can sometimes get a broken wheel where it breaks in between the lugs there, and he did the right thing. You never tap it. When you get a vibration, like you say, it's not going to go away. Yeah, when they say that in virtually every driver's meeting. June 2nd, Dover, Delaware for the Winston Cup, then on to Pocono, Pennsylvania, and Michigan on June the 23rd. If you can get a ticket, it's worth the go. Winston Cup, most exciting, most competitive racing. This one's got long in the tooth towards the end of the night as Dale Jarrett has just meandered away from the rest of the pack. Again, we're talking that way, but how many races, you being a veteran that you are as an announcer, how many people have you seen in racing with this kind of lead and something go wrong right at the end? It's never over until it's over. Yep. In fact, in this division, how many people have you seen with this kind of a lead, period, any time in the race? Pretty unusual. 15 to go. 15 laps remaining. See and Jeff Gordon there. He's just pretty much giving up. He's a moving way and letting, of course, Mark Martin go by on the fresher tires. Now, when they go in the corner, you can see how far he drops back. That's what happens when the tires get worn out. And they're not racing for position as Martin is the lap down. Jared Earnhardt, Lavonte Gordon up in front. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! All of a sudden, Jeff Gordon just flew by on the outside didn't want to take any chances on that scoring well you know they got some spotters too and they may have an eye right behind him at that number 88 of Jarrett good race here I could make a, a prediction of what happened there he probably come off the corner there and got sideways and checked up and that's the end result because you see him going right back by we'll see if he closes back up again remember last time this happened Gordon managed to close right up on the back bumper of Mark Martin's gonna do it again here he comes! <laughs> Here he comes! Nah. Nah. Fading into the distance. Michael Waltrip stays seventh. Battered car, but still seventh. Mark Martin in that six is in eighth. Ernie Urban is in ninth. Jeff Bodine, tenth. Rick Mast is eleventh at the present time. Getting down to the end of the Coca-Cola 600 in its 37th running. And Dale Jarrett getting within 11 laps next time around of taking another major step, and the biggest step of all, one race away from the Winston Million. Only one man has ever accomplished that. Bill Elliott did it. Bill, hope you're enjoying this race tonight. I know you're not enjoying it as much as you would if the 94 was up there humming in this lead lap of the activity this evening, but all of us are looking forward to seeing you back real soon. You know, when you win two legs, of the million dollars you get a bonus also we're we're thinking of the million but it, this is a hundred thousand dollar race right here a mere pittance <laughs> oh please. a mere pittance these days <laughs> i'm talking about a bonus of a hundred thousand dollars for winning two legs mm -hmm. and that's how close he is to that will put him well, you're right it'll put him over the million mark for the season thus far yeah. that seven hundred thousand he's already collected I wonder if he's going to get Gordon a lap down before this is over. He certainly is working on it. Yep. Close the gap. Tending to his knitting right here. He wants 10 laps to go, and he wants to decimate him. Boy, this is impressive. Todd Parrott and Robert Gates. Yeah, this, I think 
Congratulations, guys. What a job you've done in this car, no matter what happens in the next 10 laps. You know, Buddy Parrott has to be standing in the pits with his chest out, too, because he taught Todd what he knows about chassis and all. And this whole team, I mean, they just have to be so pleased to have that younger guy able to set a race car up like this and to have Robert Yates build in the motors and a great driver like Dale Jarrett in it. There he is, Todd Parrott. He was so pumped up that when they won Daytona, when they won that first race, the Clash, he said, you know, my, my dad came down here and he came to Daytona and the first big race he won was in car number 88 for DW back in those days. He says, and now I've done it. And there's Robert Yates. That little twitch in his eye there. I don't blame him. If I'd gone for a million dollars, I would have. The Sage. That wasn't Robert, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sort of looked like yeah, it. Yeah, he did. I think uh, what happened there, I think everybody kind of looked like Robert, the way that car's <laughs> running right now. Thank <laughs> you, He'll be signing some autographs tonight, for sure. Dale Jarrett on a run here tonight at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Under the lights, rain delayed for almost an hour. Everybody else went searching for the right chassis combination after rain changed the racetrack. These guys had it, made the right adjustments all night long. He's the new king of the super speedways. If he can pull it together for just seven more laps, it'll be his sixth win, and they've all been on the supers. Two at Daytona, one at Pocono, one at Michigan. This will be his second win at Charlotte. He's not closing at all on Jeff Gordon at this point. They're running at just about the same speed. And Jared has decided to hold back, or Gordon has speeded up. That's what I was going to suggest is happening right now. I'm sure that he knows it's his race if he does not give it away. And you don't see a Jared make too many mistakes when it comes right down to the end. And you don't want to give it away. Not this way. No, his that's daddy, the hard one. His daddy caught him good. <laughs> right? got to be the first win if it stays the way it is for Ford since 1991. Wow. Davey Allison, Robert Gensler, in the 600. Same thing. In the 600. By watching the laps run down here and watching Dale Jarrett get ever so much closer to that goal. Winning right here in the backyard for the Jarrett team. My favorite story of all time about Dale Jarrett would be after he won that first Daytona 500. But we said this before. And they came back here, and he had his whole family down there, and his young daughter, she was in second grade, and the school teacher, everybody up in, in Concord was so proud of, of what they had done. And she said, uh, his daughter is, is here, and uh, I, we want everybody uh, to listen because uh, I think it was Natalie. N N Natalie was six, no, five, in Newton, kindergarten. Newton Conover Hickory area yeah. has to be proud right now. And she and, and they said, now, would you like to tell them about you, what your father did? And he, she said, yes. He took me to Disney World. <laughs> 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 she had her priorities. Rick Benjamin. Okay, we're checking some of Dale Jarrett's stats on the season. Looks like he'll pick up about 10 points on Dale Earnhardt with this victory tonight. If he hangs on, he'll cut the margin for Earnhardt down to 105 markers. And Dale's come from 15 starting spots to command this race. Close for quite a while in the middle portions of this Coca-Cola 600, but it's been a runaway the last 150 laps. And if Jared hangs on, he'll be the 21st driver to win one of these 600-mile events here at the Speedway. Still holding on with two laps to go. But you know, as well as he has run, here's Earnhardt, who leads in the points, right behind him. No matter what he does, he can't get away from this guy. Only picks up 10 points, as dominant as he has been. Five for winning, five for leading the most laps. Three-time 600 winner Dale Earnhardt stays right there in second, while Dale Jarrett tries for his first 600 win. White flag is down. This is it for Jarrett. Goes through one very nicely, right down on the bottom. You see him giving the car its head there. He's not pinching it down, not taking a chance, and maybe getting the back down. Around Rusty Wallace, who's worked his way to 34th in that crushed and battered car number two. Heartbreaker for him tonight, as it has been for so many. And down out of the fourth corner. 
North Carolina zone. Dale Jarrett has done it. He has won the 600, the 37th running of it. Dale Earnhardt will come home in second place. Ford has won tonight at Charlotte under the lights. And going over a million dollars on the season is Dale Jarrett and stepping as close as you can get to the Winston Million. The only thing between him and it, 500 miles at Darlington, South Carolina on Labor Day. Memorial Day on TBS. Three rivals, three movies, one champion. Three rounds with Rocky. 10.05 Eastern Monday, only on TBS. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality product at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. With Autolite resistor spark plugs only 69 cents after rebate. An Evercraft 25-piece tool kit just $15.99. And STP products free after bonus rebates. So come save some green at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. America money. Some guy came into me after the race and asked me which Labonte was a better driver. Oh, really? What'd you tell him? told him I was. <laughs> Why'd you tell him that? I am. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Uh-uh. Well, who won Richmond? Well, who won Michigan? Well, who won Bristol? Who won Charlotte? Well, who won the championship? Oh, man. Who, who drives, drives a Monte, Monte Carlo? Carlo? Genuine Chevrolet. The cars more champions trust, including the better Levante. Who's the better athlete? Who's the better actor? Who's the better... If it's Saturday night, it's steak night. That's just the way it's always been. And I always use my favorite steak sauce. It's tradition. What? Yeah, sometimes I'm in the mood for something different. Something rich. Robust. Something zesty. Hard. It's there. And it's great. Eat. A steak sauce for me? Are you serious? Can you do that? Yeah. All right. Mm. New A1 Thick and Hearty. Try it now at Subway on a steak and cheese sub. Maybe it's because their frames are welded instead of bolted. Or because their decks are stamped from a single piece of steel. Or maybe it's the fact that they have the highest resale value in the industry. Oh, hey, I always wanted one of these. Thanks. But the truth is, when people are asked what kind of lawn tractor they'd like as a gift, most say the same thing. So the spotlight is now on Victory Lane, and there is Dale Jarrett about to climb out of his automobile, Hero Later's winner's circle, and Steve Burns awaiting him after 600 hard miles, the champion. And Dale Jarrett just put into Victory Lane. Dale, well, you guys flat had him covered tonight. What a race car, and what a job you did. Yeah, what an awesome car. I tell you, Todd Parrott and all the guys did a terrific job. They worked hard. Uh, all the weeks leading up to this race, and it really paid off. Robert and Doug Yates and all the guys in the engine shop, Steve Allen, uh, Nick Ramey, everybody, John Callis, just a fantastic job. I tell you, it really let me be able to take it easy there and not abuse my car because it was so fast. But, man, this thing just handled like a dream. Anybody could have won this. I'd like to take a lot of credit, but a lot of people could have driven this car and won with it. And uh, I want to thank Ford, uh, Ford Quality Care, Ford Credit, uh, for coming on board this year with us. and. Uh, we're going to see if we can win a million dollars come Labor Day. Well, I was about to say, you guys are making a habit of winning big races. Yeah, well, if you're going to win just a few, I guess to win the big ones is the way to do it. And uh, we're going to try to relieve Winston of some money come uh, September. But, uh, you know, didn't gain many points. That three car's tough. But uh, we know if we win, we're going to gain some. Well, we'll let Dale Jarrett celebrate with the Robert Yates team and head over to Rick Benjamin. Congratulations. Thank you, Steve. Certainly to Dale Jarrett and his entire crew. Beautiful victory tonight here in the Coca-Cola 600. The Plasticode winning finish award tonight goes to Todd Parrott, the crew chief of the Ford Quality Care number 88 out of the Robert Yates stables. Plasticode is the official spray paint of NASCAR. Presenting that winning finish award to the crew chief of the 88 car, Todd Parrott. Plasticode presents $2,000 to the crew chief of the highest finishing Winston Cup team. Involved in the Plasticode award program, at the end of the year, the crew chief with the best average finish picks up $25,000. Even more bonus money could go to the 88 team. Congratulations to Todd Parrott and Robert Yates Racing. And we're back at Charlotte in a moment. You can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. 
can just pick up a Napa part and feel the quality. When you look at the price, it feels even better. Pick up your share of quality products at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. With Napa Motor Oil, only 89 cents a quart. Contoured style bug shields for a low $29.99. And a combo pack of no-touch tire and wheel cleaners, just $2.99 after rebate. So come save some green at Napa's Red, White, and Blue sale. Weed Be Gone from Ortho kills up to twice as many weeds as other brands and it won't harm your lawn. Stood there bold, sweating in the sun. Felt like a million, felt like number one. Like a Chevy has crossed the finish line first more than anybody in NASCAR truck racing. Like which makes packing up after a day's work a lot easier. Peerless Fawcett didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. Introducing the VersaPak cordless rubber and broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. Our next Winston Cup event on TBS will be at Pocono Raceway, July 21st for the Miller 500. Pocono's unique triangular-shaped track that has three turns, each with a different radius. Even the three straightaways are of different lengths. This uniqueness produces some of the most competitive and exciting racing in the Winston Cup Series. Pocono's first Winston Cup race of the season, the UAW GM Teamwork 500, presented by ProMotion Engine Treatment, is set for June 16th. Race fans ahead to Pocono Raceway will be treated to some of the prettiest scenery in the nation. The Pocono Mountain Resort area of northeastern Pennsylvania with its scenic mountain vistas, cool valley streams, quaint hotels, vast recreational centers, has a warm and friendly country atmosphere. Pocono Raceway is also noted for its creative giveaway promotions and its 1996 contest is called the ProMotion Engine Treatment Fantasy Sweepstakes. A race fan will win trips for two to the July 21st Miller 500 at Pocono, the August 3rd Brickyard 400, and the 1997 Daytona 500 plus $5,000 cash. To enter the sweepstakes, call 1-800-800-0987 or send your name, address, and phone number on a 3x5 piece of paper to the address on the screen. A complete set of rules and a free Pocono Raceway brochure are available by calling 1-800-RACEWAY. 125,000 folks kind of settling back in their seats for a moment after a great 600. Take a look at the points tonight. Following this, the 11th race, Earnhardt in first, Dale Jarrett in second. Might as well have been a full moon for Dale Jarrett tonight. Let's go down to Randy. Well, a lot of adversary for a lot of folks tonight, including the Wood Brothers. We got Eddie Wood here. You guys recovered from, uh, from a, a fender that you had torn off the car, almost got some sheet metal on it, still finished eighth tonight. Good run for you. I know you know what it's like staying in victory lane because you did it last week. Yeah. And yeah, we were just happy to finish the thing, you know, in top ten because after we tore the fender off we put a new one on it it the car pushed from then on and we we really never had a chance to really adjust on it from there but you know we're just tickled to be where we are okay so they're going to go on to dover next week where they're going to run 500 miles up there and they'll give it all another shot a lot of people with a lot of adversity and dale jarrett standing in victory lane we'll be back the coca-cola 600 has been brought to you by midas auto system experts by Wagner, the power to do it. By STP, makers of Son of a Gun Protected and also Son of a Gun Citrus Cleaner. By new A1 Thick and Hardy. And by Best Western. Your best bet is Best Western.
always use my favorite steak sauce. It's tradition. Every once in a while, I'm in the mood for something different. Something thick. Robust and hearty. <laughs> yeah, all right. New A1 Thick and Hearty. Now, nine out of ten people say they'd rather be on vacation than at home. Come on. Look at board. You have to play. You have to play. Of course, most of the people they asked didn't own a John Deere, because in survey after survey, folks are more satisfied with John Deere than other lawn tractors. Honey, it's green. It sure is. <laughs> Nothing runs like a deer. Introducing the VersaPak cordless rubber and broom with interchangeable batteries from Black & Decker. Because there's nothing more rewarding than a job well done. The Bush Series race is a half the length, twice the competition. Very hard to make the field. A lot of side-by-side -side racing. 40 cars within three tenths of a second. It's the most competitive racing there is. You see the fans going crazy in the stands and twirling hats and shirts. They're smart fans too. They know what car you're in, what manufacturer you drive for. That's what we all work for, I tell you. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world. The NASCAR Bush Series. Great race. Memorial Day on TBS. Three rivals, three movies, one champion. Three rounds with Rocky. 10.05 Eastern Monday, only on TBS. The unofficial results on the 37 600. A Ford wins it, and the top five filled out by Chevrolet's. 20 lead changes among eight drivers, six cautions, 35 laps, average speed 147. Dale Jarrett came up from the bottom. His father was a two-time national champion, won 50 races. But something Alan Kowicki said holds true for Dale Jarrett. Alan said once, this is not a rich man's sport, it's not easy, but you can start at the bottom and work yourself up. There's no Cinderella story, this is no fluke, there's no magic here, there's no reason it has to end. The key is to be there at the end and to finish. That's what Dale Jarrett did tonight in the 37th annual Coca-Cola 600. For Dick Bergren, Buddy Baker, Rick Benjamin, Randy Pemberton, Steve Burns, Patty Moise, I'm Ken Squire. Good night from Charlotte.